Hello everyone, welcome back to Las Vegas, back to the PGT Mixed Game Series. It is event number four, it is the final table, $10,200 buy-in, eight game tournament. Seven players remain from a field of 61 entries. There they are, and they are playing for more than $195,000 up top. My name is Donnie Peters, alongside of me, Kevin Gerhardt, four-time gold bracelet winner, Kevin Gerhardt. He'll be alongside to provide expert commentary on these games. Here's how the final table stacks up with Dylan Wiseman up on top. Quite a sizable chip lead for him. He's followed by Dan Zach, Jim Colby, Mike Rodinsky, John Hennigan, Joshua Rhodes, and then Chris Vitch is rounding out the group. The payouts, everyone left is guaranteed $24,400. Again, more than $195,000 up top for the winner of this event. Eight games today. So we're going to play Horse, plus Nolan and Hold'em, plus Potlum and Omaha, plus Deuce to Seven Triple Draw. Those will be the eight games in rotation. Seven hands of each game. Like the past two years. You would, you would be losing money on that proposition. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, it's not hard to We're going to be starting off there. with Raz. It is the <laughs> second hand of Raz. We can have, <laughs> agree to disagree. We can place a wager on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right, maybe I don't believe in Dan anymore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Dude, Dan's a good PLO player. You, you have some PLO runs. Y'all take the phones or no? Yeah, you're yeah, supposed yeah. to put them on those docking yeah. stations over there. And they did make it through last night to the end of the day, technically. Normally you play until 1.30 a.m. or the final six players, whichever one comes first. There are still seven players remaining at this time, which means they played the full amount yesterday, giving them the shortest break between then and right now. Let's see who, who got enough sleep, who's well-rested enough to play their best today. The one player at this table that the audience may not know is right there, Joshua Rhodes. He's a Vegas local. Grace. Pretty sure he's he's in accounting, but he, he loves the mixed game yeah. and he plays the eighty game at Resorts World or the forty mix game at the win. Very happy to see someone who's definitely on the more recreational side at, at this final table with every single person at this table being a, an absolute stone cold crusher. Mike Gordinsky is going to take, or sorry, Jim Colopy is going to take the first oh, pot. Traffic. What? <laughs> Don't you live like three minutes away? Foot traffic. <laughs> just like being waited on. Jim is no slouch to these mixed game final tables. I mean, no one at this table is, is really a, a slouch with the mixed game. I'm excited to watch Dylan Weissman at... Uh, get his way through the mixed games just to get to PLO or no limit where he might feel a little more comfortable. He has been playing the, the bigger mixed games at Resorts World, so maybe he's been getting enough reps under his belt to feel comfortable against these high-level players. I'm happy to have graphics back today. This is uh, <laughs> yeah, we spent, uh, quite a treat. The entirety of yesterday's stream with no graphics because Mori Eskandani, who is a part of the production team here at Poker Go, he is the president of Poker Go, he has special access that it doesn't allow us to show the whole cards when he ends up making a final table. He doesn't play too many events. He did have his eye set on playing yesterday's event. He ends up making it to the final table, and lo and behold, he comes out on top. It was an absolutely incredible run to watch. It's not always these professionals taking down these tournaments. Here we have Dylan Wiseman up against Mike Gorodinsky. Wiseman has a six up, seven five in the hole. Also a six up over there for Gorodinsky. With I believe it was an eight four in the hold, yeah. Yeah, Dylan catches the best card he could possibly catch and Gorodinsky catches the worst card he could possibly catch. You can see the equities are very skewed one way. Gordinsky going to elect to give this one up. 
It is interesting to note in Raz, depending on how aggressive someone is, when they 2-bat pre, they tend to have low cards in their hand, like very low cards, like containing aces, deuces, and trace. So the ace is more likely to pair Dylan in that spot if he was the last aggressor on 3rd Street, which he decided to 2-bet the completion from Gorodinsky. But as we saw... Well, we're both stuck. Mike, you ready for the props? He had the 7 we're 6 5, stuck. and the ace was the, the best card he could catch. Ron? I got red. Uh, which, these three? Five, both. No, I, I can't see that far. I'll do these only. Alright. Uh, you have red? Right. Playing props? Five, True five, degenerates. Five, three, two, <laughs> they're only at the, the final <laughs> table of a 10k, and they're, they're not getting enough action. Yeah, the, the, the props have been out in full force all, all throughout the series. Also, on the breaks, they're out in the bar lobby, I gambling it. it up out there, too. Um, they, have a deck of of they have a deck of cards out there and a, piece, and a pad of paper. Uh, <laughs> so, these guys are ready to go. Yeah, this is all based on honor system. You're not going to get paid right away, and you have to make sure that the units that are being tabulated are accurate. Rhodes bringing it in here with the king up, John Hennigan, who won event number two, the $5,000 eight game tournament. He completes with a five up, six deuce in the hole. Mike Gorodinsky, looking like he's fresh off the beach. Gorodinsky makes the call, six up, four, three in the hole. Everyone else out of the way, so John Hennigan against Mike Gordinsky here. And interesting to note, Gordinsky just, just decided to call the completion from Hennigan, even with Dylan having a five behind, inviting him into the pot instead of trying to deny equity. Both players pick up pretty nice cards here. A seven for Hennigan, an ace for Gordinsky. And Gordo's hand is incredibly underwrapped here. He has no pair. Four cards, six or lower, has the most equity at this point. How does he want to play this? Hennigan came out with a bet. Gorodinsky raised. Hennigan makes the call. Going to Fifth Street here. This is where the betting limits will double. Good cards for each player. Yeah, very fair Eight on both sides. 240. So Gordinsky comes out with a bet there. Hennigan raises all in, and he is going to be all in. He's going to be at risk here, and he's going to be behind right now. He's got an 8-7 low up against the 8-6 low for Gordinsky. That is a perfect card for him to catch. Yeah, wow. Hennigan Jesus. improves to a 76. <laughs> That was strong. <laughs> Gordinsky can still win this hand. That was paint for Hennigan on the final card. Wow. Gordinsky gets a deuce. That's going to do it. He's going to make a six low, which means John Hennigan is out the door. I'm sorry? You can do your Twitter right now. You're the perfect fodder for it. Hennigan out the door, seventh place here in event number four of the PGT Mixed Game Series. Hennigan takes home 24000 $400. Hennigan did win no, event number two did. for a little bit over $120,000. Collecting a little a little more uh, points for this player of the series race. Yeah, he picks up 24 points. He'll move up to 144 points total. Still in the top five. Climbs up to fourth. Lead frogs over Jeremy Osmus on that leaderboard. And then we'll likely see Hennigan hop right into the $10,000 triple stud event that kicked off right when the start of this tournament kicked off. That's going on in the main studio room across the hall. You guys can follow live coverage of that event on pgt.com. That's really weird. Does that mean props are over? They're done? I think so. I think we one hand. saw one hand of red, black, and now it's over. I got to see all the tables. So it must be bittersweet for Gordo to accumulate oh, some chips and to knock out one of the best players Probably. in the world in John Hennigan. But now he doesn't get to play props. Yep. Good job, Dan. 10 bring in for Dan really Zach here. That. Thank you. I felt, I felt warm in my body. It's probably the tea. Yikes. Mm. <laughs> Isn't oh boy what we're supposed to say? 
<laughs> Golly. <laughs> Vit Vitch elects to just call here the bring in. For yeah, I really 20K. like this. Facing yeah. a five and ace and a deuce behind him. Rhodes is incredibly short at this point. I, I don't think Colby really wants to get involved without without something more, pretty premium. Uh, 25. I do not. You don't. Okay. Three. Wow. Another nice hand. Gorodinsky's got a deuce up, ace six in the hole, and we saw we saw Colby fold two aces, so less likely that Gorodinsky ends up making a pair here. Gorodinsky would of course know that Colby folded at least one ace. He doesn't know that he had another one in the hole to go along with it, the one that was up on third. Vich, oh, Vich gets out of the way. Well done by him. I was going to say Vich calls, but no. No, facing that much action with yeah. with such good cards, knowing that Rhodes is so short that he is going to commit himself. He doesn't want to get involved with a bunch of cards behind him that block him while the last ace in the deck. Yeah, the case ace for there Rhodes. for Rhodes. He's looking very strong here. Gordinsky's got a jack. Four straight betting limit is still the smaller limit, so Gordinsky can can peel one here. Ten for Rhodes. Deuce for Gordinsky. Pairs the deuce, so he gets a jack, which isn't that great. Then he pairs his deuce, so... Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And Gordo needs to catch running cards to win this pot. Josh Rhodes has a made 10-5 drawing to a wheel. Rhodes only has 15,000 behind. Gordo originally grabbed that 15K, but then made a comment, maybe I can save that 15K. Yeah. I mean, what if he gets another deuce, right? Oh, okay. he gets a queen. All I mean. right. <laughs> can, can, he, can he actually save it? Save it. No. And you're dead. He has an ace. Yeah. I mean, if you were ever going to save it, that was a that spot. That was a spot. That was <laughs> it. I mean, we have a made queen against well, that clarifies things. Yeah, against yeah, someone who raised on Third game. Street, no, hoping no, I mean, that, that he possibly oh, yeah, has yeah, two pair is. with a 10 and an 8 and an ace. Yeah. I, a second ago, I just it was don't much see more it. interesting. Nice a nice answer. more than Thank double you. up for Josh Rhodes here. Your Odsum Raz run good from yesterday. Yeah. It doesn't carry over. That's right. It doesn't? No. I thought it did. Nope. Wow. Two more rounds. I have a lot to learn. It's like a food voucher. <laughs> I thought it was good for the whole series. I'm just waiting for Dan's act to chime in. One one thing mixed players are known for is complaining. And Dan Zach was rolled up tens, obviously in Raz, where it's the worst game possible to be to Did be rolled up. Her? And Let's after the hand, I, so most mixed play? players are just chomping at the bit to say, I was rolled up that hand. I'm never rolled up in stud high. And I didn't hear Dan Zach say a word. He's way too professional for that. The case time, dude. Oh. He did say it. There you go. He did say he was rolled up we tens, and he, he caught the case ten. So not only did Josh Roach catch the case ace, <laughs> you shouldn't have busted he then caught the I case know, ten. Cool. Trust me, that was the last person I wanted to bust. Oh, he's going on there. Dan Zach going to bring it in again here. He's got a jack up. <clears throat> I think Dylan's learning. I mean, li limping in Raz isn't intuitive, right? right? You always want to be aggressive. You always want to put the pressure on and make your opponents fold. But seeing Vich do something a little different, a little unorthodox, might have sparked something in, in Dylan. He's he's very perceptive. I really like the way he plays. Just chamomile tea with honey. Yeah, no. Huh? Hot. Dylan with an eight up, five deuce in the hole. He does call the complete from Colopy. Both players catching paint. Check, check. More paint for Wiseman. A nice looking ace for Colopy, and he's going to fire at that, of course, and that gets it done. Yeah, the vast majority of players, when, when you take over the betting lead in Raz, even if it is a jack against a queen, you are more inclined to bet 
Dylan decides he was going to save another 80,000 after just calling Pre to avoid getting two bets with a, a, a like that you're pretty marginal mediocre fine, hand when the, in the 8-5 deuce. Well, it's the, this is just the Aria pound. Just happens to have tip. That pile of time extensions is dead, right? That was yeah, that's John's. Let's, yeah. let's maybe move those away. Okay. I'm not saying it's your job, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Have a little more. Just keep them away. You know what they say, the you can't take it with you. <laughs> they do say that. You're just collecting, right, Jim? You're not interested in using it. <laughs> it's like money. No owners, just spenders. No, Danny Wong uses all his. Uh -oh. Three, four, eight, seven. Wiseman brings it in. Cool. Vich on the short stack now. Very much in the danger zone. Ace three seven decides to also Great. limp. Just to call the bring in. Call if he's gonna attack with his ace up, eight, seven in a hole. He's very much trying to keep the pots like as small as possible for as long as possible because with his current stack, it is so easy for him to get all the money in the middle. He wants to make sure he makes the right decisions on later streets. Well, he's not going to like pairing his three there. Yeah, that's a really bad street. Vich gets out of the way there. Vich like, like he saved 80, himself 000. 80k, because yeah. if, he, if he completes, maybe maybe Jim decides to get aggressive. I know he has the 8 in the hole, but with the ace up, maybe he gets aggressive, and then Vich loses a little bit more there. Poker Go Play is here with a new way to win, featuring sweepstakes poker that offers $10,000 plus in prizes to be won. No purchase necessary. Play for free and start winning today. Play now at PokerGoPlay.com, or you can download the game on Google Play or the App Store. Pot Limit Omaha. Some TDZ. big bet poker. Let's go. TDZ. TDZ. I think I'm pretty confident in saying that Dylan Wiseman is the favorite <laughs> at the table. Not, was, not that the other players say that. don't know what they're doing. Of course, right. they obviously know what they're doing. We even but saw Jim Colopy make some final tables during the PGT PLO series, but... Dylan Wiseman is one of the absolute the top PLO players in the world. Only if we have to show it down. Let's see how he maneuvers now. Seven hands of PLO and being in the chip lead. Is he going to really look to apply some pressure on his opponents? Yeah, that's that's exactly what he's looking to do. Steve, he was a racing digit. Maybe he's not as comfortable in some of the mixed games, but this is this is his bread and butter. Gordinsky starts six things out lines. with a raise. Six. King, king, queen, nine for Gordinsky. Rhodes with the ace, queen, queen, seven. Also one suit to the ace in clubs. Makes the call out of the small blind. Gordinsky opened it up from under the gun. This is a really interesting spot. In a cash game, the ace, queen, queen, ten with an ace high suit is a three bet most of the time. In a tournament with Vich being so short and Rhodes and Gordo being almost the same stack, I like calling here out of the small blind to see what develops on the flop to make better decisions instead of just put your entire tournament life on the line. 8-6-3 here. Rainbow. Neither player hates this flop. Neither player loves this flop. It Rose is, checking over to Gordinsky. It is just a pair of kings against a pair of queens at this point. Gordinsky checks behind. Ten of diamonds on the turn. Connects a little bit with Rhodes there. But he is still behind. Gordinsky also has those diamonds working for him. Yeah, Gordo has a straight flush draw at this point. <clears throat> I expect him to say pot after facing two checks. Does decide to play it safe. Maybe, like I said earlier, Vich being so short doesn't want to get in a spot to put himself at risk. Gordinsky does back into a flush here. Is a paired board, though. A small blind range from Rhodes shouldn't really have yeah. 
too much of this in terms of full houses. If he did have some sort of full house, he would have bet his set or two pair on the turn. Tricky spot here for Rhodes. He has not a single diamond in his hand to even give some sort of thought of a blocker. Yeah, the, the, so that's the, the, just into the muck. No diamonds in the hand just makes this a pretty easy fold. Gordinsky picks that one up. Both players took a very passive line. In yeah, which I, I think is, as you're saying, you know, it's because Krisovic is so short over there. You know, no one wants to just light their stack on fire and, you know, torch all of their equity in the tournament. Right. I, I think I think that's absolutely true. Which, which again, like makes it interesting three. given where Dylan Wiseman is in chips because uh, six, maybe he uh, looks for some opportunities to leverage his stack, being the big stack, like knowing the other okay. players are probably going to want to keep things a little bit closer to the vest and yeah. not go out next. So He, he definitely wants to, to get in no, there during this orbit for sure, especially, big, 1 30, especially with the, the players yeah. being so wary of Vich's short stack. That's a fact. Good read. <laughs> I'm way too trusting. Danzak, quick fold under the gun, 10-10-9-3, double suited. Does look like a good hand, not a very good it's hand in all reality. Hurt. When it's true, it's when it's true, it's hurtful. <laughs> Are you a one card at a time type of person? Do you ever see yourself doing that when you sweat, or is it all four at once? No, I'm I'm all at once. And are you a, a vertical sweater like like Jim or a side sweater? Side. Me too. I think we we match. It can be argued that vertical sweating is better because you're showing more. less surface area. It's just a little difficult to get used to. <laughs> Thank you. Rhodes takes it down there with a raise. Like is that your No dog? opponents wanted to it is. fight yeah. back. That's my girl. Awesome. Very premium. And Double suited queens with an ace hand. Sometimes I try and, you know, sweat my cards the way I see other people do it at the table. And then I'm like, I, how, how do you even do this? I, I don't even, like, I feel like I'm exposing the entire card. I can't like, wrap my brain you know? around this. <laughs> Coming from a mixed background, I think you have to, to side sweat so you can get the full uh, red, black, yeah. how many pips are on the side, what color or what uh, suit is it. you got to narrow it down one by one by one. One thing oh, you can't do good. at the poker table is the full Baccarat sweat where yeah. you sweat the sides and then you sweat both of the tops of the cards. Very disciplined PLO around, Dylan. It hurts me so bad. <laughs> it just straddled. It hurts. I, I probably should. That's your button. I want to give it, I want to give it Definitely to tell that Dylan, Dylan, the way he's looking at these bomb cards bomb. and then pitching them for the muck, he, he wants to get involved. <laughs> yes. He wants to just have even something marginal that he can put some pressure on, but he hasn't Files been able to behind. find it. Chris Vich looks like Two he's piles, found something good enough here to go with. Okay. Vich also knows that he has two hands before he's going to be in the big blind, which... Yes, it is PLO, and a lot of times PLO hasn't been played with an ante, but big blind ante is in play. It doesn't apply to the pre-flop pot calculation, but then post-flop it does apply. Right. So keep that in mind, that if, if things were to get to Vich here, he's putting in 80K. This, that's going to get it through. That's a meaningful pickup. This is a great pickup, and, and for Vich... You said uh, found uh, something that he's willing <laughs> you, you to go with. I mean about the That's on the bottom yeah, end now, of right? what Vich was looking for to go with. Smaller. And Dan Zak in the big blind didn't want to risk another 100,000 chips to see a flop, even no, though mathematically like he's getting it. the right oh, odds to call. Stay in touch. <laughs> Look, I said it's hurtful. It's just hurtful when it's true. That's true. All right, we're even. Nine digs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't hurt you that bad. Here with some legends of the it game. It can't be that undisciplined. I'm just going to soft proclaim her. I have to see. 
Chris Fitch under the gun here. <laughs> into into yeah, the like muck it goes with Queen Nine Eight Three. That's fine. I like limit hold'em. It's, it's my road game. That's fun. Okay, and now we get to see blind versus blind. Dan versus Dylan. This is this is a really really weird spot. I I, I think I like just calling here with Dan with 100% wow. of our ranges, and both players have kings. Dylan is going to pot this every single time, very happily. Fist pump, get it in, and. Zach's probably sitting there like, you know, obviously he can have me beat, yes, but a lot of times he's just going to be kind of being aggressive against me, right? So right, it makes things a bit trickier. But going back to what you said, I mean, Zach took the conservative approach, trying to basically avoid just like if he comes in for a pot size raise, Dylan comes over the top, and then it's like, oh, here we go. Right. That Zach is, now, is at Attempting to play out of position against one of the best PLO players that we see on the on the PGT tour. Perfect, thank you. This guy's showing off his counting abilities. Okay, and the card on the flop that Dan did not want to see, the ace of clubs. Obviously these two players would have very happily been all in pre-flop, but now Dan has the option of folding. 140. 280 out there. Wiseman comes with 140, so half pot bet. <clears throat> PLO tournaments over the last few years have evolved so much than what they used to be there. PLO is widely regarded as a very action game. I had way too a lot of raise, 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 like, pot, pot, pot. Like Helmuth good? But there's a Actually, lot of yes. limping like, I had a good hand. in PLO tournaments in today's metagame. I'm sorry. I'm a lot of trying to leverage your stack later on in the hand as opposed to get it in 60-40 and see if you win. How many to check the flop, actually? <laughs> Probably would have the flop, actually. Top sudden the gutter. That's a Helmuth check. Huh? Yeah, it, he had a good, he had, it, it, I think if Helmuth was in my shoes, he might have checked pre-flop, and he might have checked, he probably would have checked pre, and oh, might call the flop. Well, Dylan's hand was that good. You had a four cross club. What? <laughs> Folded. You had a 10 or a 9 in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. At a 10. Yeah. It, it is possible for my hand to be that good. Top set. I think you guys value hands differently. Yeah. <laughs> Helmuth did cash in this event. Min cash. He squeaked in there in ninth place, busting last night, taking home eighteen thousand three hundred dollars for the finish. He was then followed out the door by AJ Kelsall, who we saw previously at an earlier event's final table. I think AJ has three caches this series so far, out of the first four events. He does. He is the only this player is with yeah, really three was. caches, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Hennigan's cash was his second. Oh. John Manette has two. Have, Aaron yeah. Coopin has two. I haven't used the coaster yet. Oh, Gordinsky's <laughs> making his third cash. Yeah. Okay. Here. <laughs> at least I looked at my cards. I pretended to look at them. Oh, Weissman, well, they're attacking from the small blind against short stack. Chris you. Vich. Yeah, not a, not a good hand for Dylan at all. But with his stack <laughs> size, <laughs> he just knows putting on the pressure is going to reward him in the long run. Yeah, this. And Vich has just dealt trip fives. <laughs> Nothing we can do with that hand. What a life. I get two buttons of PLO. That's pretty sick, actually. I'm living the dream. I do get to act before you, though. Next time I pick up three fives, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, that would have uh, been a coin flip. <laughs> and three over cards.
How many did, uh, Not as much game? action in this PLO round as, as one would expect from a, a big bet game yeah. in an eight game format. Triple studs a little Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think this one's got legs. 140. A lot of people at the table are, are kind of scared to, to gamble too much. Yes. They'd rather take their edges in different up. games. Yep. Wiseman here comes in with the raise on the button. Ace, queen, six, deuce. John had the triple stud. That one gets through. I think all options were on the table for Rhodes at that point, as as long as he didn't care about the ICM implications of Vich being so short. He knows Dylan is opening 100% of his hands from that spot. With the ace, queen, jack, even if you don't have a suit out of the big blind, you can pot it, take it down some percentage of the time, or get it in as a 60-40 favorite. Just another showing of Dylan understanding that people don't want to bust before Vich, for, before Vich at this point. Who won that? Oh, it's mine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's fair. That was yeah. quite the showdown. Cross the line. That's right. Going head to head. What is this, bowling? <laughs> Desperate times. How many times did you use that one? That was freshy. Really? <laughs> Proud of you. New material? <laughs> is that why you were late today? You were working on your lines? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Notepad and paper. <laughs> I was here at like 12.02. I thought that was arguably on time. I'm talking shit. You, you already heard it. Well, yeah. this one's over. <laughs> let's, let's Ace 10-4 okay. deuce here. All clubs for well, Dylan Wiseman. Right, right. I am surprised that, that Dylan <laughs> finds a fold with an ace in this right position. Ahead, triple stud. Third, yeah, I mean, two, two Broadway cards, I feel like he would just be in there. The ace and the 10, yeah, last I, hand, the ace and the jacks. You know, just I would expect so, too. But maybe he wants to preserve that image a little bit, you know? It's just a little bit. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe he, he wants to show that he is capable of folding. I think this hand is just, just going to get walked out. We're yeah, the, look at that. I'm sad now. Part of the order. I'm sad now. I, Talopi had a def uh, defendable seated. hand in the big blinds. Dylan commented cards. that he's sad now, seeing, seeing the walk <laughs> afterwards. Right. <laughs> now thinking, damn it, I should have opened yeah. the hand. 8160? Yeah. I <coughs> believe we are switching up the games the here. Through, yeah. Since I got through, I feel good about it. A little bit A, a little bit of B. Limit hold on. Good old limit hold This is the game you wanted to play? Yeah, that's what he said. He said it's his road game. <laughs> Chris is actually 55 years old. <laughs> it could be worse. You could be 65 years old. A couple of fours here for Dylan Wiseman. <laughs> Rhodes finds an ace jack off on the button, gives it up. Wow. I mean, I play with Rhodes quite a bit. I, I don't expect... <laughs> to find that fold. Maybe cash games are different. Maybe he is succumbing to the ICM pressure of just waiting out I mean, out that's Vich. just straight succumbing to ICM is, is what that is. It has to be. It's nothing else. I, I think so, too. I think... It's also interesting, though, because he would have been in position. Like, he, you know, he could have just called, seen a flop, and then, you know, kind of reevaluated things from there. It doesn't that's necessarily have to three-bet it. Of course, there is an argument that you could play aggressively, too. I mean, if right. you want. Uh, and, I mean, hindsight, but he would have flopped top pair, which is a, a commanding nice. lead in this pot. I don't get these wrong. Wiseman takes that one down, Flushes betting the flop in position against Gordinsky. Not having to think about bet sizing is a gift. They bet. <laughs> Rhodes, if he played the entire hand without what about putting in an aggressive action, it would only cost him 580. 560 total thousand. 
of his like A25. That. I like doing that. In so he, he wouldn't, and he wouldn't out the smallest ship be at risk at any point uh -huh. in the hand. He yeah. could he could he make good me, decisions in position, sort of angry with his know. ace jack. So I, I think calling on the button there pause and let everyone was was more right than any other action. I don't think he was angling. One sixty. Like Chris Fish with the queen size, six of spades game. comes in with a raise. It's quite aggressive, I feel, but we can't really wait till the <laughs> blind to, to find anything better. 80, 95. Dan Zach has those spades a crushed in a better hand with the king ten suited. Or, no. Of course, Vich will be still live. Yeah, Dan Zach part. just just getting it in at this point. Call. <laughs> uh, he can't make it can he? Oh, that's like, yeah. That's what happened. All right, Dan Zach made it three bets. Chris Vich just called. At least there's no any. Vich has, I believe, 15K behind. Oh, Nine, <laughs> eight, deuce. Right color, wrong suit. But that doesn't matter. The money goes in here. Zach just fires in that 15k. Vich makes the call. Vich will be at risk here. Concerning. Both his cards are live, so he's got six outs twice. Guess he could find a chop if it goes club club too. Yeah. I mean, you know. Turn card nine of spades. What? <laughs> Fish now 14% equity, six yeah. outs. He needs to find a queen or a six, or he's going to go out. That's a good point. In no no chop possible here. River is the ace of spades. Zach's king high good, and that is going to eliminate Chris Vich in sixth place from event number four. The $10,000 eight-game tournament here at the PGT Mixed Game Series. Vich takes home $33,550. One, two. And five players remain. Yeah, it's Gordo's button. Yeah. Five players remain. <laughs> I probably Rose wasn't being supposed to do the that. shortest stack at this point. What? Is this not the Sean Perry room? Uh, now he has no more reason for folding ace jack off I think on the button. Was just taking advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, it was a thing for sure. It was it was the meta, so you kind of had to adjust it. These final five players He's now guaranteed almost forty six thousand dollars in prize money. Race. Callipy here comes in with the raise. He's got two kings. Pretty good hand. Yeah, Wiseman might defend here with the 10-9 off. I think he's going to defend. Yeah. He's got enough chips that he can just flick it in and see a flop and go from there. No reason not to defend at this point. Expecting The expectation is both your cards are, are live outs, but little does he know. He's in a world of hurt, and after not connecting at all, this hand is just going to be won by Jim Colopy. Yeah, Weissman check folding the ace seven four flop. Colopy takes that one, moves up over two million in chips. He is firmly in second place, trailing only <coughs> Dylan Weissman. If you are joining us on the Poker Go YouTube channel, couple things. One, let us know where you're watching from. Type it on into the chat. We always love to see what sort of reach we're having, where everyone is tuning in from. Number two, hit that like button, please. Hit that thumbs up. Show us some love that way. That's the only currency we ask for you on YouTube. And then subscribe to the channel as well if you would be so kind. We appreciate it. Action here, folding to Wiseman in the small blind. He raises against Rhodes' big blind. Rhodes makes the call. 
got position. He's got two connected cards. Why not see a, see a flop? Of course. Wiseman taking At the lead here on now. the Finish. queen 10 5 flop, oh, flopping wow. a pair of fives. He was also the pre-flop aggressor, so he's going to come out firing. Rhodes gets out of the way. And Wiseman takes that pot. I thought there'd be a little more chatter at this table. Maybe with the elimination of Vich, it, it, it subsides a little bit, but Dylan's very talkative at the table. Dan Zach can talk. He's very intelligent. Yeah, I mean, I, I think every time I see these players at the table, they are willing to talk it up. You know, they're not going to sit there silent. I, I think generally speaking, you get more talk more talking in, in the mixed game tournaments. You, you definitely right? do. And probably, a, probably a little bit less talking in PLO and then even less when you get to No Limit Hold'em. Like that's how, right. No Limit Hold'em, no one says a word, maybe other than Daniel Negreanu. He's chatting all the time. PLO, a little bit here and there, but it's kind of more closely aligned with No Limit Hold'em. Mixed games, there's just chat up a storm. I mean, <laughs> And all of these players I know play pretty high stakes cash games, which is the most talkative form of poker I think we have. So Zach here comes in with the raise, ace, eight of hearts. Rhodes debating with the king-queen off out of the small blind. He announces a call. Colopy's out of the way from the big blind. So yep. Yep. Rhodes, the shortest stack remaining among the final five. Would love to connect here and be able to chip up a bit. Eight, four, deuce, rainbow, but one heart out there. Giving Zach a backdoor flush draw to go along with his top pair, top kicker. Rhodes whiffs completely, left with just king high. Rhodes does check. It should go back call here most of the time. We have two over cards to top pair. We'll see what develops on the turn. Also, Rhodes now with Chris Vich out of the way, knowing that the ICM pressure is off of him, like he can... You know, he doesn't need to play so close to the vest overall. He can put the money in with just king high, and he does. Right. Being the shortest stack at the table, there's really no pressure to try and wait for someone else at the table to, to bust. We get to play the hands we know we're supposed to play. Five of hearts comes out on the turn. Rhodes checks. Very favorable card for Zach. He now has a flush draw. He's got a wheel draw. He's still got that top pair, top kicker. Zach should feel very confident about his hand here. I think he should win most of the time here. Uh, Roach just doesn't have anything to to continue with. He looks interested, though. The power of king-queen high, maybe, but probably not. Probably not continuing. We only have 425,000. I think that's enough to live and fight another day. So if we call here 160,000, we have to call 160,000 on the river if the board texture doesn't change, thinking that our king high is good. It's just too much, too many chips to invest at this point. How important is like the theory and understanding of blockers and limit hold them as compared to you know no limit hold them where it, it's very prevalent these days yeah I, I don't think it's it's as prevalent in limit hold them because hands like eight seven suited nine eight suited that you can use as blockers or uh, you can use more aggressively in no limit hold them to win the pot don't really work as well in limit hold them <coughs> limit hold them is more about playing pairs, playing high card strength, because you, there's a lot less bluffing with suited connector type hands. You buy one of yours and get a full round. It's one of my favorite part of the tournament. They're, they're coloring up all the blue chips. Yeah, tournament staff coming in here to get some of these blue 5Ks out of here, or maybe all the blue 5Ks out of there. Yeah, we're going to 100K, 200K. No. 
good. We don't like those chips anyway. Yeah, let's get more bumblebees in there. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's buying them. Yeah. Uh, no, I can buy them individually. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure, I'll take it. Fair trade. Huh? This is event number four here from the PGT Mixed Games series. How much? Had 61 entries in the field. There is more than $195,000 up top. Final five players here. We have already lost John Hennigan in seventh place. Then we lost Chris Vich in sixth place. These final five players are guaranteed $45,750. This live stream is brought to us by Mezclavars. Find out more about Mezclavars over at eatmezcla.com. You guys can use the promo code POKERGO for 20% off your first order. So take advantage of that over at eatmezcla.com. I wonder if Maury's in the building, if I can convince him to, to buy me a box. Just, just I haven't seen Maury yet today. I haven't seen him yet today, so I mean, he's got a little bit extra cash he now. He does. Maury Escondani winning the tournament yesterday for exactly more than two hundred thousand dollars. So I think he can buy us some more mezcal bars because everyone um, has eaten the place out of them. Yes, they are good. No, I am not just saying that because they are a sponsor of ours. The mezcal bars are very, very good. Yeah, unless someone's hiding them from us. I checked the back they're too. All and they're all gone. They're 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 gone. Ugh. They are gone. So. There are other snacks. There's other yeah bars. I mean that's how you know the other snacks are still there because the other snacks aren't getting eaten. Right. The the mezcal bars are gone. <laughs> I don't tell anyone. Then. Do we have time to go to the restroom really quick? Uh, we're going getting cards right back. In the okay. So. Sure. Don't let them tell you what to do, Gordo. I mean, you, you take go to the bathroom. It's, it's your it's risk if you miss a hand or not. I mean, right. <laughs> Who cares if you're going to lose like some, what, some big blind equity? It if you got to go, you got to go. Anyone that wins this is almost automatically just in first? Yep, that's right. Well, what the heck? Now it means <laughs> I'm not playing the triple stud. Okay. You can't fucking pay me. <laughs> is that is stud today? Yeah. Stud's today. Yeah, right? I'm taking it off. Man. Complete max reg rake subsidy though is kind of. I think I'm still, I'm still, I'm gonna slim it. I, my body just needs a day off. I mean I'm with you. Yeah. I think God's no and stuff starts. Can you just hop into the bathroom and tell Dan we're ready? He might be in there. Sucks that Holden's the uh, game with the least leeway there. To put your phone on. Yeah. All right. So small is 25. I think I've played on a stream table a couple times where they took my phone away. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty addicted to my phone, especially when I'm playing poker. I love having music on. You know, I, I, I check updates constantly. I don't know how I would feel being at, at a final table of, of a 10K and not having access to like friends texting me, hey, this is, this is what this person folded or this person played this hand this way. You'd see me in the corner quite a bit, scrolling along. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I mean, many of us are very attached to our phones. Yeah, way more. I, I like to think that I've become less attached while I'm playing to my phone. Um, that specifically has been a point of emphasis of mine in the last year or so. Yeah, it's That when I'm playing, my, my phone will be on the table just in case, like, something happens with the wife and kids. Like, I can see it, get a phone call, I can see it, you know, I can take it. But... I don't really sure get on my phone at all. Um, I've even stopped like <laughs> updating bundle. investors. Like I'll tell them I'm only going to update on breaks right. early on. If, if I make a day two or if we get into the money, I'll, I'll do more frequent <laughs> stuff. But early on, it's really not worth it. I'll, I'll mainly say, hey, I'm playing today. And then I'll wait till almost end of reg to like say, hey, we made it through or we did make it through or whatever. Um, the one thing that I do use my phone for is I put a lot of my hand histories in there on my on a notepad. So I'll just, smart. I like that I'll a lot. just do that um, mainly. But try and stay in off social media and whatnot. Just really trying to focus on what's happening at the table, what people are doing. Um, not a big live tell guy, but if you happen to notice something, somebody's acting a little bit weird in a spot or whatever, all that sort of stuff, I think it definitely helps. Yeah, jo Josh Rhodes all in here on the button. Ace Queen off, very premium hand, much better than yep. he could expect. Gordo decides to get it in with the King Five off. Both players flopping a pair. Ace is in the lead at this point. It's a good thing Gordinski didn't go to the bathroom, or maybe it's a bad thing if he ends up losing this one, but at least he has a shot to take out Rhodes. Queen right. on the turn, so Gordinski is going to need a king on the river if he does want to eliminate Joshua Rhodes in fifth place. 
5% equity. Four on the river. That is not going to do it for Gordinsky. Joshua Rhodes is going to double up here. 50 plus 50, nine. Got it. New, oh, Back up to 900,000 for him. Now it's Gordinsky, who is the short stack, sitting on 600,000. This is how we Vegas. Do you remember that on the felt? You don't remember that? And I'll on the felt. Oh, yeah. The one time I played on a is live stream a tilt felt? Oh, was it? that was on a stream table in the middle of the tournament, here. WPT World right Championship, like, not this past Vegas. December, but two Decembers ago. My favorite run was Stack found table. It was Negranu, like Dan Smith. <laughs> Yanni I mean, it was incredible. And then okay. me, Which just is there. Lady just, Gaga, but yeah, they take they our phones. The yeah, I was like, yeah. And I remember, first they said they weren't going to start filming so until like the first break. Then they come to us like six minutes before the tournament starts, like we're moving you up there. Obviously, star power at the table with Negranu, like, yeah, they want to get it up sense. there. Sometimes you don't want to be at those tables. They tell us that they're taking our phones. We're like seven people off the money. I'm like, Savage, Matt Savage. No one else in the tournament has to take their phones. It's, we have to take our phones? Yeah, it's such a bad uh, – <laughs> it's, it's so detrimental to the players that are on that On that He's like, what do you want table. me to do? I'm like, take everyone's phone or give us ours. Yeah. I mean, one or the other. <laughs> I agree. Especially at that juncture, being so close to the money in a 10K event, like you want to kind of know what's going on. It, like it was just a bit annoying. <laughs> All right, picking up the action here. Josh Rhodes is right back at it. This time he's up against Jim Colopy. We're going to the river on 10 10 9, deuce 4. Rhodes had raised pre flop, Colopy 3 bet. Rhodes made the call on the flop. It was check, bet from Colopy, call from Rhodes. Again, check, bet, call on the turn. And here we are on the river with Rhodes checking once again. Rhodes left with just ace high and those 10s on board. He missed his club jaw. Colopy with the winner, as long as he somehow doesn't find a fold here. But it looks like Colopy's debating if he wants to try and value bet here. And there it is, 200. Rhodes makes the call. That's He's going to see the bad news. All those chips he just won are now going over to Jim Colopy's stack. Rhodes going to be left with just 100,000 in chips. Yeah, he could have saved the extra 200,000 on the river. Line is when he has 210 offsuit, he'll say, I have like two tens. But it's actually 210. He fucking loves that one. Okay, at least we're playing stud eight now. We were joking. Good news for Josh at this point. Use the same material. And <laughs> it's been, he's been gone for a minute. He was at Borgata in January, and then I don't know where he's been since then. I guess this will show up at Triton. Yeah. Who knows? He wasn't in Paris, and I think he did Paris last year. I mean, maybe he might have been Paris. I wasn't checking. <laughs> Might go to Taiwan. Uh, I have a friend there too. Apparently, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Playing one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand limits. There. Still yeah, relatively like this, tame, the but there could be a little bit of some ICM pressure creeping in a little bit more. So now that Rhodes from there, and is like, so short guys, once again. Million, yeah, this this is a game that you should be more apt to gamble in because it is a split pot game that that ends in a chop quite often. With the jack bring in here, and everyone having <laughs> a card higher than a jack, it's much less likely that we'll see a chop pot. The odds of making a low hand going way down. Zach completes it with split queens. Rhodes is going to put his final 100,000 in there. Yeah, Rhodes has an, has an ace in his hand. He's already invested a quarter of his yeah sorry he, he he had to ante the 25k so he put his 75 in there everyone out of the way Rhodes gonna need to try and survive here against zach yeah that's one of the worst hands that Rhodes can be up against at this point he must catch some running low cards or an ace well there's one low card it's a good card Rhodes gets a three, so now he's got three cards working towards that low. Zach picks up a king. And as we saw, there weren't very many low cards out. In eight pairs, Rhodes is eight. Nine over there for Zach. So Rhodes still behind right now. Still looking for running low cards. Uh, he has two pair outs at this point. That's a great There's a card five. for a Rhodes. Good card for him. Max flat. Mm -hmm. Max flat. That's right. 
I saw the equities to start the hand were about 70 30. Yeah, if you don't mind. And now it's 60 40. This seventh card for each player will be dealt face down. And we get to see before any of the players get to see. Danzak makes two pair, aces Eight up, aces and queens. So Rhodes is going to need to find a low card. Yeah. He does with a four. That was the exact outcome he was looking for. Yeah, Rhodes looking for either an eight on the river or a low card that doesn't pair him to get half the pot. He does get you see ben Wang won like half a the pot there. Who loves it more? Pompano or some Florida city that I don't even know where it is. Why? Papano Beach or something. I don't know. Wow. How much did he win last year? He just shows up to the Floridas. Mm -hmm. to... So you didn't see he had a final table of the Borgata 800, the opener. It was a 4,000 person event. This is January. I mean, when you when you know, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be the same as last time. Oh wow! It was, it was yeah. Close. Once again, we have a lot of. <laughs> I was gonna say, is, the, is the ten gonna be the bring in? No, Dan Zach gets stuck with it with the seven over there. <laughs> Even though Rhodes did chop that pot because of the antis out there, he did increase his stack a little bit. Yeah. Picked up two extra antis. Everyone folds over to Gordinsky. He's got split queens here. Very interesting spot. He, he looks over at Rhodes and asks how much he has. Gordo knows that if he completes here, he might have to go with this hand, put the rest of the chips in the middle with someone being so short. Is there an is he ever going to just call here? Calling is is definitely an option too. The other three up cards we saw were all high cards, so the probability of Dan Zach having three low cards in the hole goes up. Queens are are very highly in the lead at this point for the high hand. Gordo's debating. How much he wants this pay jump versus how much the value of the chips in his stack are. Yeah, if, if Rhodes isn't there or if Rhodes has a million inch chips, yeah. Gordon is in there. just going with his yeah, hand, right? 100%. But given the dynamic at the table, given where Joshua Rhodes is in chips, Gordinsky elects to just fold it and What's that? try and wait this one out, get that pay jump. The pay jump is about sixteen thousand dollars right now, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars, so a buy in and a half. Yeah, pretty hefty. A good hand. Yeah, that's in that in, in that spot. Bring in Okay, Rhodes has a low card that is not the bring in. That's good news for him. Colpy brings it in with deuce up, ace queen in the hole. Dan Zach has split sevens here. And Zach really isn't at risk from, from any one of, of busting in a stud eight pot, decides to complete. Yeah, Zach has those split sevens. He also has that eight to give him two cards towards a low. Rhodes, after paying the ante, has 100k behind. He elects to give it up. if he's going to make the call here. Yeah, he was only he was already invested 25,000 only cost him 75,000 more. 6 of diamonds for Colopy, ace of spades for Zach. Really good card for both players. Colopy now has 3 to a, a very good low, 3 to a flush. Bet and a call. Both players getting low cards once again. Another very good low card for both players. I can see Dan checking this spot. I think that's a that's a really, really good check. Even though his sevens are higher than the deuce four six from Colopy, he only has one three that blocks a straight, and his low draw is an eight low draw, whereas Colopy could have a made Seven, six, low at this point. Check, check here. K 
King for Colopy, five for Zach. So that gives Colopy four to a flush, gives Dan Zach an eight low to go along with his pair of sevens. The equity is shifting pretty heavily in this spot. Yeah, both players showing three to one suit. We can obviously see that Colopy has a fourth diamond in the hole. Zach does not have another spade in the hole, but still showing three spades. So that threat could potentially be there of a flush draw. I would expect Colopy to fold here very often. There are, there are cards that he could, he could scoop with. I mean, if you catch the three of diamonds, the five of diamonds, you can very easily scoop this pot or catch one of a myriad of cards to Col give him half of the pot. Colty makes the call, and then he's gonna get the ace of diamonds. So he's gonna make the diamond flush. Zach has a low, eight, seven low. Gets a queen on the river, but that doesn't change what he has. He's still just got those pair of sevens with the eight, seven low. Right, I think I would expect Zach to, to check here most of the time. Pair of sevens is okay. Eight low is not very good. We're just trying to get to showdown to see if either one of our high or low hands are good. Jim is going to bet here 100% of the time with his ace I flush. Worst case, if you're Zach, would be, and I'm asking, you bet and then you get raised. Yeah, right? and uh, you're just in such an awful spot because you have, like, not a good high hand and you have a bad low flush. hand. And we Zach, just want to get to showdown yeah, as Zach does fast quickly as call. So that was clearly his plan. Just check call this. 7th Street here. Dylan Wiseman standing up in, in our face trying to get a better look of <laughs> what just went down. That was an it does one. seem so easy for us sitting in the booth knowing all these cards for what the action is going to be. Octopi Poker is building your path to Poker Mastery. Combine modern poker tools with collaborative study. Plus, you can search Octopi Poker's growing database of live streamed hands for a limited time. Get access to the Octopi poker platform for free head on over to octopipoker.ai and become part of the tribe now we are still playing stud high low eight or better the final table of event number four ten thousand dollar eight game at the pgt mixed game series there are five players remaining joshua rhodes is the bring in but he elects to just put the money in I like that, actually, because if, if someone completes, you have so, two people in front of you that have shown aggression <coughs> in this hand, which disincentivizes more people from entering the pot. If he busts in the same hand, the person with the most chips finishes higher. That's correct. Oh, What's that? In what scenario? Yeah. Can you, can you double it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think. It sounds wrong. Yeah. Double check. Yeah. Would you mind? So if they if they both bust in this hand, what is the payout order? Given that Mike has more chips. Oh yeah, the more chips. Exactly. Okay. It, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, we're just double checking. Thank you. Thanks. Some clarification no, there, no which makes me think Gordinsky might be wanting to go with this one. This is a very very bad hand. I I, I don't really want to risk the rest of my stack. All right, he does just give it up. If it was 3-3 three, three, ace, 3-3-4, three, 3-3-5, three, 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 the yeah. jack is just such a terrible card. Okay. Folds over to Wiseman, and he says, all right, let's go. Yeah, Dylan <laughs> I'm just going to try and take you out. 75K into a pot of 200. I mean, let's go. Doesn't hurt Dylan's stack at all. Rhodes will be at risk okay. once again. Does this have to be like a three-minute run out? Or can <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean these, are, these are fast. 100%. Oh, Eight of clubs for Wiseman. Rhodes pairs his three. No, because if he makes you pair now, it's harder for me. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, no, I would have had to raise. I would have had to make yeah, exactly. So then I, yeah, it was fair. Yeah. Nine for Dylan Wiseman. Joshua Rhodes gets a six. Equity shifting here. Rhodes does have three cards working towards a low. Which the last time he was all in, he did need that low to, to you know, get half the pot. Max what? What a what a street. Oh, I'll, I'll go. All right, pair of nines here is currently high you didn't even and give best me. for yeah, Wiseman, I'm leaving <laughs> Rhodes <laughs> need to hit here on time. the end. So obvious it's four across Ready? Yeah. Okay. A four for Wiseman gives him two pair. 
Takes oh. away a few outs from Rhodes. Ah, okay, chop it up. <laughs> That's a <laughs> seven, seven of clubs for Rhodes. So he's going to get the low. He's going to chop up this. And most importantly for him, he's going to stay alive. That is definitely the biggest the biggest of part of this. He <laughs> he is very happy that we're playing Study at this point. It's the best game in the mix as the short stack because the pots are chopped. Just feel a four across, man. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Four cross is death <laughs> for Rhodes. <laughs> he thinks you're a great guy, but he just wants you. Rhodes has been all in and at risk twice, but survived both times I here in the, I kind of feel the, the recent way. going. <laughs> and as as we heard last hand, Gordo is very ICM aware. He does not want to lose the rest of his stack before Rhodes yes. busts out of the turn. He wants that extra sixteen thousand and change. Well, Gordinsky is forced to bring in here with the three of diamonds up. So he's going to be committing at least 25K more to this pot here. Action now folds over to Colopy, who has a jack of spades up, eight deuce in the hole. He knows the dynamic here. If I were Jim, I would be raising everything in this spot. Gives it up, and Gordinsky's not going to complain about getting a little walk there. No, that's the best case scenario for him with the 3 4 jack rainbow. Jim definitely overheard Gordo tell tell Zach that he folded split queens into a seven bring in. So I think in knowing that it's not gonna hurt Jim's stack too much to just put in an extra hundred thousand chips. Colby brings it in with the three of spades. Another tight fold from from Gordo at this point. Yeah, I mean you can just tell he's just playing the ICM situation that's presented itself, and you can't. I mean you can't blame him. 16k if, pay jump. If you can fold a few hands and make 16k, yeah, yeah sign me up. With with how short Rhodes is here, right? Zach is going to complete here with split aces. Also got a six. Also has two hearts in the hole. Rhodes is going to call all in with split jacks. He's going to see the bad news that Zach just. Doesn't Very have some news. low cards. He's got, he's got a pair of aces. So Rhodes is behind. His third time that he's going to be all in and at risk here in like the last, what, ten hands or so. Seven. Two pair. It's always coming seven. Okay. Josh Rhodes makes two pair yeah. jacks and sevens. Oh, go. Still got to fade a whole bunch of stuff over there for Dan Zach. He's just happy that Zach caught such a bad card in the ten. Six for Rhodes. Three of clubs for Zach. So he's got three clubs working. Two more cards to come. He could still make a flush. Ace of diamonds for that is Rose. A good street. Yeah, good card for him because it takes away the chance that Zach can hit an ace to move in front. Zach with a queen there. Okay. King for Zach means nothing. His pair of aces go down in flames to the two pair of Joshua Rhodes. This time Rhodes is going to get the full double up, not not just the chop. Okay, he's going to get the, the full amount. Being on the, the wrong the wrong side of 70-30 to start uh, the hand equity-wise, he's gotten half the pot or all the pot all three times he's been all in. And right away, you heard Mike Gordinsky ask Joshua Rhodes uh, how many chips he has. Because yeah, no, now Gordinsky and Rhodes are much closer than they were before. Gordinsky is still ahead. He has 500,000 to start this hand. Rhodes has 300,000. What? And we're giving Gordo an ace. See if he wants to bring in. contest this pot. Yeah, Colopy's the bring in here with the seven of diamonds. Gordinsky's got the I ace mean, up, eight, three in the hole. Where are we going with this hand? He's in there with the complete. Zach's out of the way. Zach had an ace and an eight in the hole, so less chance that Gordinsky can make a pair. Wiseman also with an ace and eight in the hole, so. Rhodes out of the way. colopy has got a playable seven, five, four. All right, he's in there. Deuce for Colopy, five for Gordinsky. Very good cards for both players. Gordinsky bets. Colopy makes the call. Colopy gets a king. Gordinsky gets a queen. 
Probably not the worst card if you're Gordinsky. I know it doesn't really work with that low, but you're, now you have ace-queen high, which, you know, can win. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. You know, you, pair of oh. kings now. Pair of queens. Okay, kings versus queens here. The money is in. Last there was card. No sweat. We just ripped it all over. Kings up. Two pair. Kings and fives for Colopy. Gordinsky diamond. needs to make a low or he's going to need to find a king and Paint ace or diamond, a queen. Says. So I it's either the king, queen, jack of diamonds. Gordo, who's played very, very snug, waiting for Rhodes to bust out, decides enough is enough. Puts his chips in the middle. I don't blame him at all with, with that hand in that, that dynamic. Gordinsky goes out in fifth place, taking home $45,750. His elimination, very much music to the ears of Joshua Rhodes, who was a bit shorter than him. Had to do some surviving on several all-ins, did so, and then now was able to ladder up and has guaranteed himself a $61,000 payday, as have the other four players at the table. Dylan Wiseman still out in front, but... Start this looking in that rear view, three? sir, because Jim Colopy is coming. To be Jim Colopy has up over 3.3 million in chips. I like that stick. And closing in on Dylan Wiseman's chip lead, we are changing the game up to deuce to seven triple draw. Yep. This is a limit game, but it can play pretty big. Yes, okay, so. this game definitely <laughs> plays quite <laughs> large. The bad news for Rhodes at this point is everyone else at the table will play oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. their hands the way they're supposed to. Slowly. No one is going to make any extra tight folds. It looks like a little bow tie, but it's like him because they're not at it. risk. And Rhodes with the eight five four draw two. This gun for raising it up here, almost all in. I don't expect him to get it through, even if even if Dylan has to draw four. I think he's he's going to put it in from the big blind. We'll see if Dan Zach wakes up with anything. He does not. Dylan has a very strong hand. He could play this hand multiple ways as well. I don't ever think drawing zero is right. Uh, drawing one is, is definitely my favorite option. So you're thinking Dylan's going to draw one to the nine. Yes. Rhodes is, of course, going to draw to the 8-5-4. He's going to pitch two. Right. I, I don't think standing pat with the 10-9 is, is correct. One. one. Wow. Yeah. Wiseman announces one. Yeah, sorry. Rhodes is going to take two. Yeah, they did. There are three draws. One. Okay. Rhodes picks up a pretty good card. I mean, it does give him a straight draw at this point, but it will go 1-1 one, one at this at this juncture. Wiseman pulled a four and paired. He's going to pull a four again. I mean, all the fours just getting okay. circulated here. <laughs> Rhodes, unfortunately, cannot stand pat with his queen at this point. Cards on their up? back, gentlemen. Yeah, we have to, right? Entering the third and final draw, players all in wow. will turn over their hand. Dylan makes uh, a 9 5. Perfect. Just the perfect card. Yeah. A queen again for Rhodes, and he's going to go out. But he did earn that $16,000 pay jump That's by surviving ahead of Mike Gordinsky. So. Good job there for Joshua Rhodes, $61,000 in his pocket. He's out in fourth place here in event number four of the PGT Mixed Games Series, leaving three players. Dylan Wiseman on your left in the purple pullover. Jim Colopy with the face mask on, and then... Dan Zach looks like he's about to pull his hair out over there on the other side of the table. <laughs> So we talked about Dylan's prowess oh, okay. in PLO. I want to talk about Dan Zach's prowess in Deuce of Seven Triple Draw. I have spoken with him on numerous occasions, asked him about the way I would play <laughs> certain hands or the way he would play certain hands, and his mind is incredible for this game. I think he has such a huge edge in this game, especially shorthanded against these players. I, I'm excited to see how how he plays, assuming he gets some reasonable starts. The Ace-King 966, not where you want to be. Almost a problem. Dylan also wow. not where you want to be. Wow. Colopy had a very one monstrous eight, one yeah. draw to an eight. No, less. One point eight. Yeah, no, it's not one point seven. One point seven to start there. Okay, thank you. Deuce to seven triple draw is played. Everyone gets five cards to start. It's a limit game. Twenty five fifty. There are three different draws where you can 
pitch away cards and get new cards back Still into your so hand. Ultimately, no you're trying if you're trying to make the best hand, you're trying to make deuce three, four, five, seven. Straights count against you, flushes count against you. Aces are high in this game, so you see Dylan Wiseman yeah. right now has that ace. That ace is not a good card. But the seven five four, those are three pretty good cards because they belong in good. that wheel. The nine is okay, and being on the button, if we like have opponents that are drawing three, we could draw one to the nine seven five four. If it, if your opponent draws two, we can make the decision to draw to the seven five four instead. Fold. Position is so key in this game. I expect Danzac to call here and draw three. And then Dylan can draw one to the nine seven. Two. Represent a stronger hand than what he want what he actually has. Decides to break it. So Wiseman does break that nine. He's gonna draw to the seven five four. Zach is drawing to the six twos. Zach makes a nine six on the first that draw. Okay, so Danzak checked dark. Dylan, knowing that he's drawing two, facing the draw three of Danzak, fires out. And it's an interesting card for Wiseman because he gets a six. The queen is going to pitch for sure. Four, five, six, seven, though, again, straights count against you. Yeah, so. this is such a, such a bad hand for, for Dylan. If we, have our, if we had our nine and we catch the six, we'd have a nine, seven at this point, and we can decide how to play the hand. From there, drawing to the seven six five four, facing a raise and a pat from Danzak is not a good spot because we're looking for exactly a deuce. No other card makes our hand good enough to go to war with. Raise. He does get a ten, and he elects to raise here. Okay, so knowing that Danzak drew three, Dylan's taking the aggressive line of raising with the ten seven, trying to represent something better than what he actually has. If Dan Zak breaks, the 10-7 is a huge favorite. Now Dan Zak is in the spot where if he pats, Dylan has to make a decision. He does pat. And like I said, Dan Zak is, is so good at this game. It, he, is, he is definitely someone to learn from. Zak checks here on the end, just gonna go into check call mode. Wiseman gets a 10 again, checks behind, nine, and right. that 9-6 for Dan Zak is going to be the winner. Well done by him. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly played hand. It's not easy playing a 9 in this game. I know we can look at the screen and we can see that he's ahead and he looks pretty good, but in triple draw as opposed to, let's say, single draw, a 9 is like kind yeah. of there in the middle where at times you can feel like you're in no man's land. So right. well Short-handed, a, nine's, a nine's power goes up. Yep. Course. Um, Dan Zach was in even a tougher spot because he knows on the first draw he pitched a nine, which makes it less likely that Dylan is raising with a nine in his hand. He could have a, a number of eights or he could have the semi bluff uh, of the con convertible ish 10 7 that he actually did have. Zach also didn't have a seven in his hand, so he True. could, you know, there's a chance that Dylan over there does have a seven, a 76, you know, or the wheel. Raise. Kalp, he's got four pretty looking cards here with the 765 deuce. He's also got the button, so in for a raise he goes. It is. Kind of like symmetry. Expect a call here and a draw three most of the time. You can argue folding because the six is such a worse card than, say, a three, four, five, or seven because you are drawing to more straights with the two six. And the six is not a, a card that is in a wheel, being two, three, four, five, seven. These chip stacks are very close right now. It is anyone's game. Yeah, after losing that pot a couple hands ago, Wiseman does slip into second place in chips, the first time that we've seen him not have the chip lead at this final table. Colopy is now the top dog and Dan Zak has done well to, to close the gap and now he finds three wheel cards here. This is the best. I mean, obviously suited is, is a little bit bad yeah, for you. The only the, thing that's negative about it is the fact that they're all clubs. <laughs> the, the best opening two card draw you can have is two, three, four. Good one here for Wiseman. 
Now, Dylan should fold this hand. He's out of position against someone as good as Dan Zach, and he doesn't have a deuce in his hand. I think this is a little a little too loose. Kalpi never folding this hand, especially with the three ways. That's what added I want to see. Knowledge Let's go. of having a deuce in his hand. Three ways, and everyone has like a pretty decent opportunity to to make some noise here. So uh, I'm in for this one. Yeah. Dylan, let, let Dylan's there be hand blood. <laughs> by far in the in the worst spot, knowing that there are three twos. Dylan goes for two. Colopy goes for two. Zach goes for two. Chuck. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you guys will notice that Wiseman had two sevens. He pitched the seven of hearts, kept the seven of spades, so not allowing himself to, to make a flush should it come down to that. Zach does improve to uh, an eight perfect draw, two. but it's a club, <laughs> so not the, not the eight that he wanted to pull in. He is the only one that that improved on yeah, the previous. Zach street. did the betting there after check two. Both of his I opponents called. It's two again Let's for Wiseman. It's two again for Colopy. Zach down to one. So now, as, as Wiseman with the with the nine seven six five four. Is going to stand pat, I think, after after this round checks around. And we're just going to hope to get to showdown. Like, we got lucky enough to hit two cards to give us a nine low. And I'm assuming it's easier for him to stand pat having it checked around. Like, if it checks oh, yeah. and, and Zach bets, then it's you're kind of in this you're, no you're man's in land. You're in right? such, a, such a bad spot with the 7-6-5-4, just like we were in the previous hand. We could call and stand pat, but once it checks around, this is a very easy stand pat. And Wiseman with the most equity out of the entirety of the field. And Wiseman's going to get the check mark here as long as he gets to a showdown. His 9 7 is good. Colby makes a 10 7, but that's of course behind. Zach pairs with that 3. Colby's not going to turn his hand to a bluff at this point. He's nine also going to try and get to showdown. <laughs> you heard Colby there. Thinking maybe if it checks around, my hand's gonna be good. Maybe, maybe. There's, there's, there's definitely a, a potential. I'm not sure Dylan stays pat with with any jacks there, but he could stand pat with a worse ten. So that pot going the way of Dylan Wiseman moves him back into the chip lead. Jim Colopy back into second place, and then Dan Zach sitting in third place now. But all of these players have plenty of chips to fight with. Dylan on the button now. Yes. Very, very strong. One draw to the eight, shorthanded. Raise. There is the raise that we were expecting. Colopy's out of the way. This is just not, not where you want to be. I mean, yeah, you probably have to call just because it is shorthanded and Rangers are so are so wide. Dan Zach drawing three to the three five. Dylan drawing one. Feels kind of similar for Zach specifically than the hand that he ended up winning a couple hands ago against Wiseman, where calls out of the big blind versus the button raise, pitches three. Now he had the six twos that time. Here he had the five three to start. Right. And, and then Wiseman's got a little bit of a better looking hand. Yeah, Dan Zach catches a deuce, which is the exact card that he wants to see. That was the only card that improved his hand. So Zach now drawing two. Wiseman draws one. Zach checks. Okay. Wiseman checks behind. I like this check from, from both players. One, one. Zach oh, wow. is going gonna to pair Dan, his ten and Dan Wiseman is, is going to pair his eight. Dan has to bluff in this spot. There's no other no other way around it. And it might work. It, I think it's definitely going to work unless Dylan can. Nope. Nope. Dylan just instantly doesn't even think game. about raising. Or is it? Yeah, it's time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's Badugi and No Limit Deuce. Yep. Got it. There you go. Perfectly played hand from Dan Zach again, as we as we would expect in this Wish game. Three way triple draw hand had been pot limit triple draw. I feel like I would have won that. No, one. I would have pulled a pre-flop. <laughs>
There is a new season of High Stakes Poker airing right now on Poker Go, and it just might be the show's most thrilling season yet. You guys can join us on Mondays on PokerGo.com and the Poker Go app. Instead of, instead of five, because there's only three of us left. Use promo code so NEWYEAR24 to become a I'm new annual wondering. subscriber, okay. and you'll save Thank $20 you. off your first year. Oh, uh, right. First. Okay. Race. Colopy on the button with the two draw to the 7 5 tray. He's in there with a raise. Zach's out of the way. Normally, these are hands you don't want Race. to play unless it's shorthanded. Wiseman dealt a pat eight. A very good pat eight, too. This is the, the seventh best hand you can have in Deuce to Seven, which three handed is a complete monster. He did put in the third bet. Colopy called in position. Wiseman's going to stand pat here. Sorry. Yeah, Colopy is drawing to a wheel, but needs to get very bet. lucky. Oh, you bet. Colopy pitches fix. two. For Colopy to win this hand, he has to, he has to catch a deuce. At some point, there's, there's no way around it. Any other combination of cards that do not contain a deuce will not Still allow pat, him eh? to beat the pat hand of, of Dylan. All right. Dose. Wiseman bets. Colopy calls. Wiseman remains surprised. pad, of course, and then just is going to fire out here in the dark. Can we catch a deuce for, for Colopy? Catches a six. He is going to continue with a seven, six, five, three, but once again, we can see he is awesome. only drawing yeah. the three remaining deuces in the deck. Yeah, this is the, the problem where if he does catch an eight, you know, it's going to cost him. On he, the river. He thinks an eight is good in this spot, and most of the time, shorthanded it is. Oh, he gets my a deuce. God. He just Colopy finds catches it. catches the three outer on the river to catch a deuce. Now Wiseman's just going to get smacked with it. Comes up betting. Colopy raises. Wiseman makes the call. He's going to see the bad news that Colopy did make a 76. Oh, my gosh. Such a good hand for Dylan Wiseman. He's just dealt it's, the 86. It's he more disgusting pat. than you know, Dylan. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can do there if you're Dylan Wiseman. He no, plays the I, hand as you should. Exactly. Pats play, the whole exactly. way, fires the bets the whole way, and that's the uh, wow. That's the brutality that is triple draw. That's what can happen. No fair. Wow. Hot 86. <laughs> we with, with that pot, Colby, it, not it, only does Colby move into the chip lead, Wiseman now third place. That's That was a Very, big, Slightly big below pot. Dan Zach, but still third place. We are switching it up. We are heading over to No Limit Hold'em. The stacks oh, are exciting. pretty yeah. deep for a, for a round of <laughs> a No Limit Hold'em. I was drawing two on in the second street. But yeah, that kind of hurt me. Whew. I don't expect there to be much action in this orbit. This is just one of the games where you don't want to gamble too much, so it's going to take some sort of a, a cooler situation for there to be a large pot. Oh, One thing points. that scares yes, mixed game crazy. players about playing <laughs> eight game or anything that in involves big bet is the possibility of being all in at any point in the tournament, not realizing that people don't want to be all in. Most people are playing these these hands very passively, as you see a limp and a check, small blind to big blind. Wiseman still with the best hand, flopping a pair, Colopy flops a gut shot. I really don't expect Jim to do anything but call here. Maybe he can find a raise, blocking some 7-6 some type of hands. Just wants to take it down now. He does put it in the raise. I mean, given how this played out pre-flop, Colopy could have a bunch of sixes forward? in his hand as well. Yeah, so. definitely. Okay, thank you. And if Colopy has anything for value there, the 7 5 pair, pair of fives with a seven from Dylan is just nothing. It, that was it, a big hand. That was a you can't beat anything. Big swing. Very nice. Very nice pickup for, for Jim, to continuing to decide improve his chip lead. Do a thing. Take out games? Because I've played. I mean, I've played where we just play a Take certain amount of games. Is that allowed? I have That's no can idea. you do that? I don't know if you I mean, I'm sure you would. in the cash game, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. The tournament, I don't know. I mean, it's eight games. We can add more games. <laughs> no, thank you. 
Yeah. All right. I assume he was going to talk about about okay. some sort of chop. Or some so sort did of I. Like but I was wondering why he was being so like mysterious about. It. I'm like, just say chop. He's like, do a thing. <laughs> what does that mean? Take out some games? No, it's an eight game tournament. Yeah, Dylan Wiseman says we're going to take out seven games. Leave PLO. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Dan Zak is like, yeah, only triple draw. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Zak would probably want to play Omaha Eight. One of his <laughs> bracelets is also in Omaha Eight. So maybe we'll we'll play a mix of yeah. Of those two. Callipy limps. Dan Zach comes in with the raise with two kings, and Callipy just gets out of the way. I am under the impression that the the prize money for tournaments belongs to the player, but w when you have something as, uh, as extra incentive as the PGT leaderboard, you shouldn't be allowed to, to change the, the prize pool or offer any sort of chop in this tournament. It should just be, this is how we're doing it. This is how the points are stacking up. Yeah, listen, I'm with you. It's been a point of heavy debate within the company, but I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, because if, if you get later on in the tournament, you can you can alter the way the leaderboard looks so easily. Or later on in the tournament series, you can alter the way the, the leaderboard looks, and it just doesn't seem fair to everyone. Call up here on the button. Jack three of spades comes in with the raise. Dylan Wiseman's got a suited hand himself. Calls with eight six of diamonds in the big blind. Nine, eight, five. Wiseman connects with a pair of eights. He's also got a gutter to a straight and backdoor diamonds. Colopy's got just jack high, but he's got some backdoor draws as well. Colopy is the player with position, also the preflop aggressor. So he's going to come with a continuation bet here, 100K. A very small one-third pot bet. Dylan's not going to go anywhere. The only consideration is, is raising. Wiseman makes the call. Ten of diamonds on the turn. Rather interesting card. Very interesting. Wiseman is still out in front with those pair of eights. He picks up a diamond draw on the turn here. Colopy's now open-ended. Does Colopy want to represent a hand that includes the jack of spades, some sort of straight, some sort of jack-10 combo? Or does he want to take his equity with the open-ender going to the river? 525000 in the pot. Yeah, he gets a better visual there of what Wiseman's working with, which is just over $2 million behind. And like you said earlier, there's a lot less chatter, a lot less uh, interaction in the round of No Limit Hold'em than there is in the other mixed games. Looks like it's going to be pot size. 500 is the bet. Nearly 100% pot. Now Wiseman's going to need to make a decision here. As we can see, Wiseman's straight draw is no longer good. If he makes a straight, Colopy makes a higher straight. Wiseman probably does assume he has... A decent amount of equity. I, I'm not sure he thinks it's the 82% that we see on the screen, but, right. you know, the pair, the flush draw, he might be assigning some value to that straight. Of course, we can obviously see that, as Kevin just mentioned, a 7 would be bad news for him. All right, Wiseman does make the call. So this pot up over 1.5 million now, which is just about what Dylan Wiseman has left. Jack of Diamonds on the river. Wiseman gets there with the flush. So the interesting part about this was Colopy was bluffing on the turn. If Wiseman finds a check here, Colopy just gets to check back, which he does very quickly, taking his, his pair of jacks to showdown. Wiseman quickly turning over the winner there. Once Colopy checks back, Wiseman just absolutely knows that he has the winner, of course, and... He's going to collect that pot. That, one, that was the yeah. perfect card for Dylan to make no more money in that hand. Browse, I'm just going to stun run. And then just end it during PLO so we don't have to get back to when the hold'em study and triple draw again. That's the plan. So it's 50-75? Yeah. Cool. 
Still playing Nolem and Hold'em here, but the level is going up. Small blind, 50,000. Big blind, 75,000. Dylan Wiseman back up into second in chips after winning that pot off Jim Colopy. Colopy still up out, up out in front though, so but pretty pretty close overall. Wiseman seven five offsuit in the small blind again comes with the same option of limp. Remember, there is a big blind ante in this, so. It only costs Wiseman 25k into a pot that already contains 200,000. Colby checks the jack four off. Heads up between these two once again. King seven four connecting with both players. Wiseman's pair of sevens is best here. He checks. Minimum wager from Jim Colopy, 75K. Can't imagine Dylan Wiseman is going anywhere on this street. Make a pair and heads up play. Especially blind versus blind. Yeah, where you're, you're sticking check. around. <laughs> you're yeah, sticking around for a little bit. Pair of sevens is, is the best. He's coming with the check raise. 225, sir. Says, see me now. Colby makes the call. This pot started off pretty innocently. Certainly not premium holdings for these players, but we're approaching 700k in the middle as the deuce of spades rolls off on 4th Street. Weissman first to act here. Still with the best of it with those pair of sevens. Weissman slowing down here with a check. Colopy does unblock all the straight draws that Wiseman could have check raised the flop with. Maybe we go for a, a little bit of value at this point, thinking that our, our pair of fours is good. That we know the deuce doesn't change anything on this board. He elects to check back. Ace on the river. If this one goes to showdown, Wiseman's going to take it with that pair of sevens, but still have to get to showdown. Check. Wiseman checks. Check. Quick check back from Colopy, and he's going to hear the bad news because Wiseman's got that pair of sevens that he announces. Into the muck goes... Colopy's jack four, second best on that one. And Dylan Wiseman takes that pot and climbs back up into the number one spot. He's back into the chip lead. It is interesting that last hand, when Dylan checks on the turn, that means he's trying to get to showdown with some sort of some sort of uh, value hand that he raised the flop with. Jim can suss this out and you, uh, turn his four into a bluff, just decides um, to take his showdown value and lose the pot to the pair of sevens from Dylan. 1.1 1 .1 times two, 2.2. 2. That was a big pot. Yeah, it was not fun. Not fun. I, my fun didn't start until the last street, though. He had had more fun for more, he had fun for more of the hand. Hmm. I really, my body wanted me to I check eight. Eight six smooth. I, li I literally wanted to check the river, which is you ridiculous. can't check eight six in that spot. It's just uh, just an unfortunate run out. I don't think Jim ever divulged that he caught the deuce on the river either. That would be the extra the extra twist of the dagger. Colpy here comes in for a raise, makes it two fifty with king queen off out of the small blind. Zach's got king six off in the big blind. 
Colpy sizing up a bit here. Pre-flop having to play this one out of position should it come down to it. Zach is in there. Little does he know. He's dominated right now. Four, three, deuce, rainbow. Probably going to make things a little bit tricky for Colopy to play this one. Zach calling in position. Can have quite a bit of connectivity with that board. Zach can have some ace highs that are working well there, so Colopy electing to check. Zach checks behind. King on the turn. All right, boys, fireworks, let's go. Okay. <laughs> uh, both players thinking, okay, good. I got my king. For Zach, not so good. <laughs> not so good. Like I said, these pots probably won't play as big as some of the, like the two seven triple draw pots that we just saw. It might just go back call, back call. I mean, this is also a card where you know Colopy is probably going to rep it a lot of times, and and Zach knows that. Yeah. You know, true. so Zach's probably thinking, okay, you know, if he's got. Jack nine, Jack ten. He's just gonna he's gonna bet this king, so I can pretty comfortably call in position. Of course, we can see that he is still well behind here. Three seventy five is the bet. Zach makes the call, so this pot's up over one point three million now. Queen on the river that gives two pair to Colopy. There was a backdoor diamond draw that came in on the turn, but no diamond on the river. Colopy now should probably go for some value, and then we'll see what sort of sizing he wants to go with. I would say it's probably all on the table. I Give think it, so, I too. mean, he could overbet jam and could. try and put, put Zach to the test here. He could obviously come with some sort of smaller sizing, try and get value that way. I think an overbet is probably too aggressive. Maybe something like, like half pot. Maybe seven hundred thousand. We can we can try and ask from Zach. Represent those missed diamonds, as you alluded to. Colopy's used quite a few time banks in No Limit Hold'em, and I don't think he's used any time banks in any other game. Thanks, Eight seventy-five. Yeah, kind of on the larger side. Zach calls it off. He's gonna see the bad news. Colopy didn't need that queen on the river. He just needed to fade. Zach making a straight or making two pair. Yeah, that might have been max value for Jim Colopy at, at that point. Dan Zach under a million chips now. Big pot there for Colopy. He's up over 4.7 million. Stretching out that lead at the top of the leaderboard. You guys can see the chip counts at the top of the screen. Presented by our friends at Monkey Tilt. Zach, kind of in the danger zone at this point, isn't going to shy away from ba from playing pots, though. He's under no ICM pressure. He's just going to play the best poker he can, try and spin it back up to where we just were. Colopy with a raise here on the button, 175, Jack 9 off. Zach is out of the way. Wiseman also out of the way. No worries. That's on, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who is tuning in to this final table live stream, event number four, ten thousand dollar eight game. Here at the PokerGo studio on the Las Vegas Strip.
This is the PGT Mixed Games Series. If you are watching us on the PokerGo YouTube channel, throw us a like, hit that thumbs up button, please. Also, subscribe to the channel. Bring you guys poker content every single day. Sometimes it's live streams. For sure, every single day you're going to get some sort of highlight. I know Remco has been hard at work at releasing some of the old school WSOP episodes. Here comes Dan Zach on the button. King 10 off. Puts in one of those committing raises. We got back. Queen Jack off for Colopy. So, All right, here we go. Off to the races we go. Zach in his King 10 currently ahead, but it's only 60 40. Colopy is very much in this one to be able to get this down to heads up play. An elimination here would mean an $85,000 payout. We could also see Dan Zach double up and get right back into contention. Flop, please. King, Queen, Deuce. Zach maintains his lead. Top pair here with his King. Colopy does pair that Queen. Oh, the prepay. <laughs> oh, no. Is he doing the prepay or is he's he doing, doing the, the pullback? Oh, he's doing the no, prepay. Pre okay. Deuce on the turn. All right. That through, means a Jack outs. is no longer an out for Colopy. He's going to need to find one of the two remaining Queens. <laughs> Oh my god. Jack on the river. Zach does have the best two pair. He's got a king with the deuces on board. So he's going to double up here. Get back up to almost 2 million. Colby is still out in front, but he dips back below 4 million. And we're still three handed here in event number four. <laughs> Sacrilegious. What's your, what's your combo? King with the six. Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Me and Jim are both like, yeah. <laughs> the six is a really good card. Switching now. up the game, we are playing seven, seven cards stud card now. And, uh, this one could play pretty big. I mean, this might be Lots of streets of betting. Limits I mean, are going to be 125,000, 250,000. Like and this is a one winner game. No split okay. pots here in this one. So. I like it in general. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see the blood, action. boys. Let's let's get it in there. Come on. Yeah, you're just gonna have some. We just need the right card distribution. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Give everyone some high cards. Lowest up card will bring it in. That's gonna be Dan Zach here with the five of clubs. Complete. Wiseman with the complete. He's got a ten up. He's got at least an ace in the hole. Colopy's out of the way. Action now over to Zach. Zach brought it in. The bring in, the force bet is 50,000 during this round. Zach gets out of the way. Wiseman takes the pot. Snap complete from the queen from Colopy. Has the highest up card on the table. Yeah, he's attacking here with that up card. But Zach's got a pair of eights. So he is in there, and he's in there with a raise. Yeah, he knows Jim is, is completing a lot with, with his queen up. Jim with two over cards to the eights. Decides to come along. Nine for Colopy, queen for Zach. Good pull of the queen for Zach because, I mean, it's already unlikely that Colopy probably had a queen given that he didn't re-raise, but, you know, now it's just less likely that he's going to be able to make one. 
Colby did get a card that works, you know, towards some sort of straight possibilities. Now he's got nine showing, right, <laughs> which are ahead of the eights that, that Zach has. He picked up another over card to the eights. Colby should bet here. Does decide to check. The ace is a little scary of a card. Dan knows that his eights are no good facing an open pair of nines. Colopy gets a king. Zach gets a seven. That check back was really good news for Colopy. How often should Colopy be betting here? I think with his with his straight draw, and he has a lot of higher cards that block uh, his nines from being not in the lead at this point. He should be betting quite a bit. Facing a check back from Dan Zak on the previous street, it, it's just a pretty a pretty clear bet in this spot. He does just that. Does Colopy fires a bet, and Zach gets out of the way quickly. Win your way to the PGT Championship Million Dollar Free Roll at the end of the 2024 season. Become a Poker Girl Annual Subscriber and you will be entered into our drawing the first of each month from March until December. Ten annual subscribers will win a Dream Pass. They'll compete in the Dream Seed Invitational and then winners from that Dream Seed Invitational will be into the Million Dollar Free Roll PGT Championship. That'll likely have a $500,000 top prize once again, so... It does pay to become a Poker Go subscriber. The best price is the annual subscription. Nope. Colopy brought it in with a deuce. 3 4 behind. Both other players decide to fold. No one having anything here. Like I said, you have to have the right card distribution for there to be action in this specific game. Colopy still holding on to his chip Consider lead. Danzak not really in the nice. danger zone yet. Getting some entries. But if he loses a pot. To get to church. <sighs> I will not be an entry in that field. He needs to take a nap. Paint for everyone here. Jack of clubs is the lowest. Based on suit, club diamond, heart, spade. That's how we rank him. Call up has got a couple tens in the hole, respect. though. No, no one, wow. no one with anything to play with. Look at that. That is respect. The king five deuces is, is so bad. Colopy did have a hand that he was going to raise no if games. Dylan decided to complete with his king <laughs> as a steal. <laughs> I like the other a lot too. I know. No, I'm talking about Raz. Two more. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Raz is up there for me, too. I like Raz, actually. Raz is fun. I thought, yeah. I didn't like Raz, and then I really liked Raz. I felt the same way. I didn't really like Raz, and then I won a Raz tournament, and now I really like Raz. Well, you have to like Raz now. I mean, you don't have a choice if you win a Raz it, tournament. Yeah. You I just mean, have to like it. Right. Raz is one of those games that if you're really good at math and numbers and memorization, you will be good at Raz. Stud high is definitely the hardest out of the three stud variants to play properly. So kind of a similar spot here than we saw not too long ago with Colopy and Zach. Zach is the bring in here. Wiseman on a steal with his king up. Colopy behind with a pair of eights. Earlier we saw Colopy on the steal with the queen up, and then Zach came in with the pair of eights. Zach here, what's he working with? Because he makes it three bets here. Yeah, anything that Zach wants to play in this spot, he needs to come in for a raise to deny equity to Dylan and to take over the last aggressive action in the hand. You could have a number of, of over cards, a number of flush draws, there you go, ace, queen, four. Two overs and a flush draw. Very strong hand. Weisman did fold his hand. Colopy made the call. Of course, it's important for Zach, knowing that the king of spades and the eight of diamonds were the up cards for his opponents. No clubs there. 
Colopy catches the Jack of Diamonds. King of Clubs is a nice catch there for Zach. He's now got four to a flush on the first four cards. Yeah, Seven no, of clubs. Of, a lot of high equity. Seven of clubs, four Colopy, four for Zach. Zach pairs a four, so... <laughs> Colopy kind of a sigh there, like, well, what the heck is this? What am I going to do? Yeah, he's he's not beating any two pair uh, that, that Zach has, that three bet the third street. Zach does show the ace, queen, four, catching the king and the four. He caught two very good cards for him. Very nice pickup for Zach, back over two million chips. Two point two now. Plus, two. Oh, two. Thank you. Zach does get his stack up over two million. Camp Compton, listen, I gotta, I gotta break the bad <laughs> news to you. <laughs> no stream tomorrow, man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Grace, I don't want to make him feel bad. Was that the queen Bison of bringing in with three Colopy, completing with the seven of hearts. Is going to take this one down. That's all you needed. Seven of hearts. hearts. <laughs> as, as known as my current. Yeah. This might be Dylan's least favorite game from what we've seen of the entire final table so far. He has taken the least amount of aggressive actions. <laughs> and I don't blame him. I, I still think I struggle with, with stud high more so than any other game in this mix. <laughs> You can remind me about that trouble. Listen, chat. Maybe it'll get I want to stream. Okay. It was cool that you did I want to be here doing commentary. I did. Me too. I mean, it's not my fault. Really Kevin cool. would join me. We'd raised, be here. Really I'm sure sad. the players wouldn't no, mind. I'm seeming it's above my pay grade. On the, yeah, on the yeah, and if you have street. issues, support at pokergo.com. Just yes. blast. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just spam them. Careful okay? what you ask for, but <laughs> do it. Not my doing, okay? Five bet three ways while still drawing after the first draw. And then got there, made a seven again, eight perfect. Russell, I know there's events happening. Really what do you want me to say, man? <laughs> you don't. You guys don't even know even the the teeth we had to pull to get nice. four streams from the mixed game series. Yeah, okay? I believe it. <laughs> oh, really? No. We have had some pretty good turnouts, though. We from have, yeah, what of I, From what I was expecting. No, good turnouts, okay. good final tables. Got Negranu there twice. I know everyone loves Daniel Negranu. Some solid first place prizes. Some fun play. <laughs> if anyone in chat like is, is able yeah. to be I in Vegas for these satellites that they run, they got seven yeah, they seats for the first two satellites of the series. It was amazing. Yeah. Omaha 8 or better now is the game. This is a yeah. game with blinds as opposed to antis. Dylan Wiseman like on the, on the left, left there in the purple pullover and the sunglasses. He's going to start on the button. A limit tournament at WSFP before. <laughs> Literally zero. That's good to know for us. I mean, <laughs> I really, I, I really did, you, did, you did you already know that? I'm pretty sure you knew that already. I did not know that you've never played a limit tournament at the World Series. No. Nope, never. Time to start. Oh, this year. Yeah. I'm going to play more hands against you. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, You're why fine. not just start off with 10Ks of Poker Go? Who wants to play 1500s at the World Series? Yeah, of course. That's not going to happen. Yeah, maybe. Triple draw, no, it's not going to happen. Cool. Some of them, yes. Dan getting pretty low on those time bank chips. That's kind of surprising to me. I know he used quite a few in the, the round of No Limit Hold'em. This hand was limped from Colopy out of the small blind. Zach checked in the big blind. Colopy comes with a bet and Zach gets out of the way. Payouts right now. These final three players guaranteed $85,400. Next spot, $122,000. And then there is $195,200 up top for the winner. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Dan Zach and Dylan Wiseman both That's making their first cash at this PGT Mixed yeah, Game Series. <laughs> Colby does have a cash. <laughs> pretty, Max Rays. Pretty not sodium generally. From event number one when he finished in eighth place. NACO. I was thinking on my way here yesterday, which players uh, I think are the best players in the room to not make a final table, and three of the players that I came up with were at this final table. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Vich, Dan Zach, and Jim Colopy. Check. Very pleasantly surprised. Now, is, is final table the final table live stream? or is it like The live stream final table, yeah. yeah. I mean, John Minette's in there. Uh, I, I mean, think, that is definitely know, one of those for but sure. But he did, I asked, because he came in seventh in the first event. So uh, he just yes. missed the six-handed live stream final table, but ultimately finished in sixth place. Yes, he Phil is definitely you, in Phil the Hummuth? conversation. No, Phil conversation. Phil Hellmuth, <laughs> I mean, for someone who shows up. Max I'm just here to ask the question, man. I'm just here to ask the question, okay? <laughs> Jim Colopy turned uh, what we call – Nut nut in the business, meaning he has the best possible low hand and the best possible high hand. Dylan Wiseman flopped three pair, called off says nut nut. playing the low that's on the board and correctly calls out that, that Colby did turn nut nut. nut. Nice pick up there for Colby. He's up over 5.1 uh, million in two, chips now. Two, okay. Wiseman still second in chips, but yeah, yeah, right yeah. there, virtually like, tied with one. Zach. Yeah. You can, I don't care. Our tournament scoreboard uh, up at uh, the top uh, of the sorry, screen, like, presented like by our friends at yeah. Monkey Tilt. 2.050. You know, I learned that line, the one that we just played. I learned that at the World Series. Oh, just by betting every street? <laughs> Making not not betting every street? I could have maybe folded. Who knows? A lot of pairs. I don't think so. That's one of my favorite things in mixed games when you can say nut nut. I it's also like you know, agree. it's just like one of those cool things. Nut nut. Nut nut. Nut nut. I got it all. <laughs> Your hand directly into the muck. <laughs> okay, Zach, Zach on the button. Ace king king four suited to the ace. Yeah, very premium holding. Very good high equity. Good low equity. Call is coming make along. A call out of the big blind here. Dominated both ways with a high and low equity. King 10 5. Check. Top set for Zach. Call up he checks. Seems like the flop he wanted to see. Yeah, Zach going to come with a bet here. Call up he should get out of the way, and he does. Dan Zach back into second place. These players are, are battling. There has, have been some pretty big haymakers thrown in this match. Cheerio. I believe that was the voice of Talal Shakurchi. I heard that would there, make sense. Which would match up with the Cheerio. Yeah, that would make <laughs> sense. Given that he's British. <laughs> the trick is to flop the nuts. <laughs> That's actually. Brace. It's good to see Talal over here for this mixed game walk, series. Can you walk the stud rounds in there? Five and ten thousand dollar buy-ins, not too beneath him. Right. You know, even even though he plays much much bigger than that. Yes. On regular occasion, I he think just loves the game. I think he's even been out there battling in the two four and three six thousand dollar cash game that's been running. Yeah, those are limits as well. Yeah, not I mean, buy-ins. Uh, astronomical. I think that, that they even got up to four eight maybe yesterday. That's four thousand, eight thousand. Crazy limits. Yes. What's the largest you've ever played? One two. Four hundred, eight hundred. Four, eight hundred. Wow, that's yeah. good. God, man. <clears throat> live, live, right? Yeah. yeah, live. Took a shot. Didn't work out. <laughs> hey, man, you gotta take those shots. We're playing Badusi. Mm. And Badusi, I was dealt eight eight, eight Badugi, <laughs> eight low, <laughs> against two players, both drawing two. I bet out. Get called on the first draw. They both draw two again. I bet out. I'm on the button. 
I bet out. Oh, I get wow. raised and raised again. Oh man! You. And you're, you just hate your life. Yeah, yeah. Eight eight is such a good hand. It's so hard to make <laughs> eight eight in Bidusi. No jokes. And I end up folding. <laughs> One person makes a better That's eight eight, and you. the other person just drew two and made a wheel. Jeez. It's not fat shame anyway. Brutal. 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 So Race. I got smacked right back down to where to where <laughs> I belong. <laughs> Colopy on the button here. Ace, queen, jack, eight. Puts in a raise. Ace, ace, king, jack. I'm, I'm sure uh, Wiseman's thinking, I wish this was PLO. Yes. <laughs> it does decide just to call. Uh, 1725. Out of position. So no. I mean, he, ha he has no low equity. Nine, four, deuce. As Kevin just pointed out, no low equity there for Wiseman. Colopy does have that ace, eight. That could make a low here. Check call from Wiseman. Five on the turn. Call will be picking up diamonds here. Yeah, that's the only reason for him to bet in this spot. I think most of the time he would just check. There's no reason to bet your hand is a bluff and your, your hand is not good enough to go for value. Oh, and there is the eight of diamonds. And also with that 5-4 deuce out there, Colopy has the low. Yes, Kalpi has what we call a live ace in his hand with the eight five four deuce ace. Of course, we can see Wiseman doesn't have a low, but you know, yeah. if he did, Kalpi might feel like he's got some equity there. Yeah, if Wiseman had any card between two and eight to go along with his ace, he would have the same low as Kalpi. Check bet fold there on the river. Wiseman gets a bit shorter in chips now on 1.6 million. Colopy continues to climb. Colopy has really had Wiseman's number recently at this table. Yeah, it it started when Very he hit true. that deuce on the end in triple draw, beat Wiseman's 8-6 perfect. Wiseman was dealt the 86, stood pat from there, was betting the whole way after putting three bets in pre-draw. Yeah, you can't you can't fault fault him for the no, way you played. No, you can't. Of it. course, just, it was just a bad run out. Just a really bad run out. Colpy makes nut nut against him. Yeah. He wins that hand there. So Colpy has certainly had Wiseman's number here in the recent few rotations. Although last hand, I mean, obviously in, in hindsight, if if Wiseman three bet out of the big blind, bet the flop, maybe it goes back call, and then you bet the turn with your aces, maybe you just win. Limit the pot here between these two. Wiseman comes out with a bet on the flop, and that's going to get you. it done. Still three-handed. No one in the danger zone yet. This game, not too bloody so far. Wiseman taking the worst beat that we've seen. Very playable King King 4-3 on the button. Colopy looks sad to fold that hand to Jack Jack 10 3. <laughs> no suits. Not a hand you want to play in Omaha 8 or better. Dan Zach like coming along with the call. Ace Jack 9 7. But don't chop. Okay. This is a really good flop for Dan Zach. He has the full wrap, meaning any card, six, seven, nine, jack, queen, all make him a straight. The three is a better card for him because it counterfeits Weissman's low. Dan Zach with the ace seven low Are we at this point. the schedule issues? I agree. We got you know what you do? number issues. I missed you know, the, yeah. the unpopularity of it. You know what you do? Dylan's hand has shrunk up quite a bit with the way this board has progressed. We have no flush draw, just a pair of kings. 
And we're calling on the, the high equity of our kings only at this point. Which, this will be a chop pot if Dylan decides to stick around, assuming Dan Zach wants to bet. Zach did miss everything, so he might check knowing that he only has ace high at this point. That's just a great bet. It really is. Weissman does have a four in his hand, blocking Zach from having ace four and a wheel. Can he find the call with the two kings? It's very difficult raise. in this spot. He finds a raise with the power of his four blocker. That kind of came out of nowhere. That came out of absolute <laughs> left field. Nice wow, look at that. You know me so well, Jim. Gets it through. Triple fours. So that he can so win the well. entire pot. Well done. Wow. I mean, what are you, you going to do there if you're Dan Zach? I mean, it's just like, okay. You have a very bad low with a seven low yeah. and ace high. I mean, Wiseman found the raise into the exact hand I guess he was hoping nice. for. I know. Putting quite a bit of space between Wiseman and, and Zach he at this bluff. point. That, that was a great raise. You're, are you referencing the time I was bluffing? Which one? The, the one time I got caught. I'm not a bluffer, Dan. I don't know. I'm pretty sure well, that was definitely <laughs> a bluff. At the, P I want to say the PGT PLO series. Maybe it was. Me, no, it was the No Limit series. Recently, he yeah. blew Remember, all his whole stack pretty much, right? Like I think he got no, he, caught bluffing. He got no. He he had that insane bluff where he went on to win the tournament afterwards. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like yes. four three yes. in his hand against the pocket tens, or he had five four or something. Yeah, my against fault. the pocket tens, and check raised the flop barrel barrel. And got to fold from the full house on the river. The board was like Let's three three eight three eight. We yes, got pocket I, I, tens I remember to that fold. now. Yes. Good luck to both of you. Don't shop. I, I want to yeah. say it was I am against excited. Artur Martirosian. I don't think so, but it was a, a, another euro. Maybe he was at the Ooh, table. Another I euro uh, player. It's all blending together for me. I'm, I'm botching it. Whatever. I also watch all of these final tables. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll go back and have to listen to my voice for however long we did this. I, I remember that when he, and I, I remember after the hand, someone's like, well, he didn't have an eight or so, something like that. And the table was like, what do you mean? He could have an eight. <laughs> right. He could also have a, have a three. It was like three, three, eight, three, eight. And he had like four, five or five, six and got pocket tens to fold. Didn't we just play that one? I mean, it's, a, it's a double up. Oh, okay. I wonder if chat yeah, knows who is that. Who is uh, his opponent wow. in that hands? Three anti PLO. It was the one that that Dylan went on to win. And you're the one with the most chips, so. <laughs> Dan Shack currently Dan Zach, not Dan Shack. Dan Zach currently the short stack Please. here, on a little bit less than 1.4 million. Brings it in and then folds. Wiseman called. Call it be completed. And Wiseman's in there still. Yeah, Call it be's just hoping for a good run out for him and a bad run out for Dylan. This bet obviously not going to work. As we can see, no seven <laughs> in Dylan's hand. He has not paired yet. Jack for Wiseman, eight for Colby. Colby pairing those eights on his board. Dylan in a commanding lead. Colopy still telling that story that he's was drawing to an eight, has an eight now. Yeah, and the worst Check part him. about it, Dylan could Three be drawing eight. dead. 
with a nine, drawing to an eight. And Colopy gets there on the river. Another deuce on the river. And I believe it is the same deuce of clubs that he found <laughs> on oh, the third he's... draw of deuce seven triple draw. He just has Dylan Wiseman's number. And Wiseman here has got the nine eight seven five deuce. So. And Colopy gets to turn over his hand if, if it goes to showdown and say, look, I started four three deuce. Isn't that a good starting hand? Yeah, which, which you know, goes along with the story. But Wiseman here does find a disciplined fold. Do you know when a hand is dead? Like if you start booking it up, or does it have to be marked? Uh, as soon as you pick the card, like turn the, the cards or pull them into you, it's dead. Okay. Like if you look at it like it's a book, it's dead. Okay. okay. Thank you. I think that's true for tournaments, but not for cash games. I've had this discussion with with uh, like some tournament directors because your hand. I mean, you still have all the cards. You can produce whatever whatever you have in your hand if, if you're missing something. I don't yeah, really I mean, like it. Would, it would be kind of it would be interesting if you you know put all your cards together, looked at them like fan them out in front, and you're like, oh, I have an eight. Oh, call right. You know, but <laughs> like you can just misread your hand, which. We've seen before. We saw John Hennigan the other day misread his hand. You know, That's so. true. <laughs> uh, even the best in the world sometimes <laughs> can can misread their hands. Keep you honest. So if if Dylan were to call the river, and then pick up his up hand and read it like a book, his hand is still live. Yeah. Still good enough. That's why they say if you're new to different types of games, just turn your cards over at the end. Right. <laughs> so, you know, Agreed. let the dealer help you out. It often start. comes into play in a game that's in these rotations, Omaha High Low, because like you said, you can have a live yeah, ace. Like it can all be these kind of weird things when it's like, uh, I'll just, I'm just gonna turn my four <laughs> cards over, and the dealer can tell me if I have a low, if I don't have a low. Right. What's my high? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I still remember the the times where I have wanna, made the mistake of, oh, I didn't realize I had a live ace, and I just turned my hand over. Like, oh, you win half the pot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or you know you, you have you have that live ace. Your opponent also has a live ace, but it may look like they have a better low. But really, you guys are just chopping, and it's you know right. Next games are hard. Turn your hands over. Very very bad if you if you muck half of the pot or all the pots. I mean even even in no shame even in Omaha high low if you're mucking a quarter of the pot, it's better to get a quarter back than zero. Yes, okay? <laughs> so. every time it all adds Freeze. up. No way. Colopy with the three, as we can hear the excitement or the surprise from Dylan. Enrique FV in the YouTube chat is asking about the best hand in Raz. Ace, deuce, three, four, five. Called the wheel. Straights don't count against you in Raz. Flushes don't count against you in Raz. You're just not trying to make pairs. You also don't have to have a qualifier. You know, you could have a queen low, for example. You could have a pair low. Yeah, so... Stud eight or better, you do have to have that qualifier of having five cards that are unpaired below an eight, or eight or lower, um, but not in Raz. Raz, so ace, two, three, four, five. We know that Jim Colopy was raising any two cards in the hole in this spot. Dan Zak decides to defend uh, with the 10-4-3, catches a five. Jim Colopy wisely, understanding table dynamics, checks over to Dan Zak. Colopy does check call. Kind of giving away the strength of his hand, but taking a, a less variant uh, route to reaching 7th Street. Interesting street here. Colopy gets an 8. Comes out betting. Zach paired the 5. The so same thing I just mentioned. Colopy could have a number of, of different cards in the hand, as, as we can see, he does have a, a 10. So Danzak is still drawing at the 10-5 against the made 10-9 of Jim at this point. Does commit a quarter of his remaining stack correctly. Nice. Yeah, Zach getting pretty short here, but he's going with this one. Deuce. <laughs> oh. And he gets... A third five does Zach, and he's just going to grab his cards, and I mean, he wants to rip them up. He's not going to because he's too much of a gentleman, but I would be ripping them up. <laughs> yeah, now the, now the hand is over. Colby shows the ace.
Zach back in the danger zone. Thank you, Stella. Thank JJ34 you. says, same, next same PGT Mixed Game same. Series, I want a oh, dealer's oh, choice event where people can make up games. So oh, there okay. is a dealer's choice event. You can't make up games, though. I, I believe it's 20, maybe 21 games are available, and every time the button is on you, you do get to select a game. That was our hot right, Play that a, game for a rotation. The button moves to the next person. That's a gaming they select commission a game. issue. Yeah. You can't oh, just be like, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, blind man's they, bluff. They went from 125 <laughs> to 150. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or... You know, you get. Okay. I would just call the game "I Win." Yeah. Or yeah. the rules. Like Everyone, yeah, you're I all, win. You're all disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the official triangle room TD, Alan? Everyone's all in, but I'm the only one that gets dealt cards. There, there were three yeah. more. Yeah, I like it. I heard we were gonna get ten more time banks. So this coming. <laughs> All right, the uh, the limits have increased. We are still playing Raz. Danzak, unfortunately, with the bring in off of his seven hundred thousand remaining stack. The last time we saw this dynamic, Dylan limped a very similar hand, and Colopy decided to raise. Colopy gives it up this time. <laughs> Danzak firmly in the danger zone at this point, with only two bets left in his stack. Nice. Okay, good news bring for Danzak. He does have the lowest card on the table, is not the bring in. If he has anything reasonable, he gets to raise. I think he should raise this anyways. Dylan has a somewhat playable hand. I don't think he's we going to four? contest, though. I think the likelihood of, mm. of Dan Zach being all in is, is high, except <laughs> nice for play. when Colopy pairs his jack and Dan Zach catches a oh, deuce. Perfect card. Much needed pickup. Dan Zach was the winner of two gold bracelets at the 2022 WSOP. Both of those tournaments I felt like took forever. Yeah. The the one that sticks out the most, though, was when he won the 10K stud eight. He beat David Funkhauser in heads up play. I, they played that on the horseshoe secondary stream okay. that Remco and I were Bring commenting on. I feel like, were you okay. there for that? No. no the, that one went forever. I though. feel like the Omaha eight was even longer. Yeah. But that was against, on the main set. Against Duck, Dustin, Dustin Dirksen. Dirksen, yeah, yeah. So when when Dan Zach is at a final table, we're we're just in for the, the longest long final tables run. of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, so Ace Deuce three up cards. Everyone having at least three to a nine in this spot. We're going right. to see some fireworks here. Kalpi gets out of the way with his nine seven three. A very playable hand in Raz and. One you could contest, could continue. You're hard to chop in this game. Zach makes the call. And if he gets a <laughs> favorable card here, I'm guessing he's just going to end up it's going even crazier with it. instead of high. Okay. It's favorable that his opponent paired that ace. All right, here we go. And he gets a good card to go along with it. Yes. Wiseman's just like, all right, let's just, not get, the, going let's just anywhere. get the money in. <laughs> Eight for Wiseman, six for Zach. Zach does pair that six, but... He's still going to be betting here. He's got 100 behind. Wiseman's going to put them all in. That's good. And here we go. Feels like it's been a while since we've had an all in and a call, but here we are. Dan Zach is the player at risk. Dan Zach, the inaugural PGT Mixed Games champion. He won the first ever edition of this series. Yeah, very well deserved. Obviously, incredibly talented. No, thank you. Well, he's going to need to show off his skills in surviving all-ins here. Ten for Dylan Wiseman, king for Dan Zach. Could be worse. Looking pretty bleak. Yeah, we just, let me go first. Seventy-three percent for Wiseman. 
One more card. Down and dirty. Three aces for Wiseman. Good enough for the high. <laughs> Noah Cross Club could be the ace of clubs. There it is. Noah Cross Club is perfect because he has the deuce of clubs. So it's either the ace or the three. That's exactly the card he wanted to peel. And just like that, Dan Zak doubles up. He's back up to 1.9 million. He moves ahead of Wiseman <laughs> on the leaderboard. Uh, one, once again, the short stack doubles up, and the person with the least but amount of acrid that needed to approve on 7th Street finds a way to do so. <laughs> yeah, so one year ago no, when we had the first PGT so Mixed Game Series, Dan Zak had five caches. Okay. Nice. He finished... Third in event number three, which was the triple stud mix. He finished eighth in the, in the big past. bet mix. He finished seventh in the triple draw mix. He finished sixth in the dealer's choice tournament. And then he took second place in the $25,000 10-game championship event. I believe he chopped that event with Jason Mercier. Jason Mercier ultimately coming out on top. But that finish gave Zach the series title. And then he skipped the second edition of PGT Mix Games because, I mean, he was getting married. It seems like an important reason some, to skip some things it, but are more you know, than others. And, but now he's back here <laughs> at the PGT Mixed Games, and he's three-handed alongside Dylan Wiseman and Jim Colopy. Not bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Oh, Zach, always so one okay. of those players who's like always kind of in contention for WSB Player of the Year. Yeah, one conversation. Of the highest drafted players for yeah. the 25K Fantasy as well. He really made a push Maybe a couple of years ago for POI. He even got into the 250k super high roller. You know, yeah, remember that? He was like, he's like, I got to sell for it. Let's do. go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we did switch the game to PLO. Dan Zach raising out of the small blind with very, very premium double suited pocket aces. Dylan in the big blind, ace eight six five. I mean, it's an okay hand to bluff with, but. Facing a, a raise, I don't know if we really want to turn up the aggression. Wiseman well, elects to call here. 1.125. Going to play this one in position. Ace, 10, 8. Oh Could boy. be bad news this for is, uh, Wiseman. He flops two pair, but he is in a world of hurt. I mean... You don't see equities like this often in PLO. 96% for Dan Zach. Yeah, there I don't see any possible way this this doesn't get all in. The SPR at this point is is only 2, which means Dylan stack is two times the pot. Dan Zach betting small here. Can Dylan just find a fold or fi find a call and then maybe fold on a turn? Queen. Uh, I mean, I think our hand is just too strong at this point to do anything but get it in. Unfortunately. Oh, that's not good. Did you pull up that? He knows that. <laughs> wow, that's. And, wow. and Dylan knows it. He said, that's not good. And then he said, did you flop top set? <laughs> yes, yeah. he did. Right. He knows exactly when it, when it goes that pot, pot. And yeah. just like that, a couple of hands ago, Dan Zach was all in, sweating the final card in Raz for his tournament life, yeah. finds the ace of clubs, doubles up. Now he has Dylan Wiseman at risk with yeah, Dylan Wiseman. Do you have him covered? With, you know, he's yeah, headed out the door. He's only got 2% here to win this hand. Yeah, Dylan wants exactly the ace of hearts on the turn, which would obviously counterfeit the, the entirety of the deck. <laughs> Oh, what a turn. Seven I of mean, clubs on the turn. Okay. I mean, we go from 2% to 10%. Yeah. All right. Give me a four. A suit preference? Wiseman no, has four outs four. No dress code. to win. Dress to he can chop with Super a nine. Perfect. Looking for a four, though, to oh get the double gosh. up. Right, again, guys. Jack of uh, spades okay. on the river. That's not going to do it. We lose Dylan Wiseman in third place. Yeah. He cashes for $85,400 here in event number four of the PGT Mixed Game Series. He, died he did say look. earlier on a couple different it. occasions that he will up. not be hopping in the triple stud. Instead, he's going to go take a nap. So we won't be seeing uh, Dylan Wiseman in the triple stud event that is running across the hall in the main studio room. But we will see him throughout the remainder of the series. 
after he catches up uh, with that nap. I was we are now heads up. So you, Jim Colopy and Dan Zach. Once again, Zach did win the PGT right. Mixed Game Series. You have to be posting a blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first ever one that we ran awesome. last season on the PGT. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Nice. So there are some That's leaderboard funny. implications here. If Jim Colopy does come out on top here and heads up play and win this tournament, he would get 195 PGT points. Add that to the 17 that he got for finishing in eighth place in event number one. He would take the top spot to on the leaderboard, moving ahead yeah, of bluffs. yesterday's winner, yeah, Morius so Kandani, who's currently up on top with 202 points. This is Dan Zach's first cash of this PGT Mixed Game Series. So if he were to go on to win, he would be up into second place behind Mori Escondon. Two and a half? Okay. The player to finish with the most points atop the Thanks. series leaderboard wins a $10,000 PGT Passport. They are also crowned the PGT Mixed Games <laughs> champion. Right. Does come Let's with the call. caveat that you have to cash twice. Okay. So, I, I in think, a way... I think that's good, because if you just win the 25K... Yeah, we, yeah that's what we wanted. Can... We didn't want, you know, just... It, it happens mostly in the no-limit stuff. You know, some of the bigger players, the Jason Coons, Nick Petrangelo's, et cetera, Justin Bonham's, maybe they just come in for the 25K or the 50K finale. Right. They rip it off, they win all the points, they're the champion. Yeah. We, You know, we want to award the best player of the course of the series. I agree. I think that's the way to do it. We are still playing... Pot Limit Omaha here. Very interesting flop. Colopy flops top pair. Dan Zach flops bottom two pair. Bet and a call. No direct help to Colopy on this turn, but he can catch a six to make kings up to beat the jacks up of Dan Zach. Check, check on this turn. I might just go check, check on the river and Dan Zach wins. I don't really think either hand is strong enough to bet at this point. Neither player should, should have four or five too often with the bet and call on the flop. Colopy does check. We'll see what Zach decides to come with here. Dan Zach, he could go for like three hundred fifty thousand as a as a value bet. Try and get called by exactly a pair of kings. Looks like five fifty. Goes with a half pot bet. Colopy's turn now with a decision. See if he can find the correct fold here. He is lifting his cards up. Makes the call. Does make the He's going to see the bad news. Zach's going to show his two nice. pair. Jacks and sevens. Colopy's hand into the muck. And look at those chip counts up at the top, Kevin. Anyone's <laughs> very, very, very close. Remember, it was like 10 minutes ago. Dan Zach was all in. He started the hand with like two big bets. Found the card on the river that he needed to double up against Dylan Wiseman. Then he took out Dylan Wiseman. What? Now he wins a big pot here and heads up play against Jim Colopy. That was very nice. And he's, tell you. you know, a couple hundred thousand away from taking the chip lead. <laughs> no, for me. Tournament <laughs> poker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm thrilled that he was able to allow it to frame the remainder of this afternoon. There is the trophy on the table. I'm, I'm actually surprised he held it back. 
These two players guaranteed $122,000 in prize money. First place worth $195,000. Appreciate everyone who is tuning in on Poker Go, on the Poker Go YouTube channel and elsewhere. My name is Donnie Peters. I'm joined alongside four-time gold bracelet winner Kevin Gerhardt. We got trips for Zach. <laughs> Not what you want to see in PLO in well, your hands. Let's see if he gives off any sort of reaction. Call if he did limp in, so Zach could elect to see a free flop here. Yeah, let's see if we can flop quads. Oh, no. Well, he Call can't. Call has he's got that case eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Seven, six, five. Call if he does flop the straight, the eight high straight, but Dan Zach has three eights in his hand. Yeah, all the blockers. <laughs> so hard for Colby to have the last eight, which he does. Colby's going to bet here. I wonder if Dan Zach is going to attempt to take this pot away as a bluff with his three eights in his hand. This is the flop. I mean, if you have eight, 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 three, this is kind of the flop you want to see if you are willing to turn your hand into a bluff. There is a check raise from Zach, so doing exactly what Kevin was just talking about, taking all those blockers and applying them to try and take this one away. Yeah, if you're if you're not doing it in this spot, you're just not bluffing enough. Call the beat comes along. King of clubs on the turn. Call B has two clubs in his hand. Zach has one club, but Colby right now with that backdoor flush draw to go along with the flop straight. Colby obviously has the check mark. Dan Zach drawing completely dead. It's going to take some miracle on the river and some very well timed aggression for Dan Zach to take down this pot. 650 is the bet. Zach coming with 75% pot here. Nice and nice and chunky. I'd be very surprised if Colby did anything but call in this spot. I mean, we talked about the blockers for Zach, of course, having those three eights. Colby has an eight as well. So, you know, there is some blocker thing where he's like, you know, yes, I have a straight. I'm probably not folding. But it's also good that I have an eight where it can deny some chance that Zach has the eight nine. Okay, so as as Dan Zach in this in this spot, we have to hope best case scenario Colopy has a set or two pair that he didn't want to fold on the on the flop that turns some sort of club draw. And now if we pot the river, can we get Colopy to fold said two pair or set on the flop? As we can see He does go for it. Dan two Zach million does go for it. Colby cannot fold this hand. This is this would have to be some sort of insane live read to give up in this spot. It's also really hard for Dan Zach to be bluffing, like really hard. And listen, whether or not this works, you got to give credit to Dan Zach here for sticking with that plan and following through all the way. Yeah, he is he is just a, a master. I mean, if if you're not like I said, if you're not bluffing with this with this hand, what hand are you bluffing with? Dan Zach did not want to see Colpy reach for anything and throw it in the middle. We saw, we heard Jim Hennigan, or uh, Johnny World Hennigan say yesterday that whenever someone tosses anything into the middle, it scares him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sometimes you're kind of just looking out of the corner of your eye and right. you, you see something get thrown in and you're like, oh, they tabled their hand or oh, they folded or oh, that was a chip, you know, so. Oh wow! He gets it through! Show him. Dan Show Zach. Him. Oh, my gosh. He's no. going to rub it in. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my gosh. Shows the three eights. Dan, Zach, sir, you are a master. Wow. Hello. And when we started heads up, the, the chip stacks were switched. 
Now Dan Zach in a pretty commanding <laughs> Look lead. Look at Colopy's face. He's like, are you serious? Wow. Just fold the second nuts. Don't think Dan Zach has enough bluffs in his range. Little did we know the 888 does get it done. Not an easy spot there for Jim Colopy. I thought he was going to call. I think you agreed that he was probably going to call. You know, it's not like you're not fist pump calling, but you're probably just like, okay, I call, right? Yeah, I, I think you can chop sometimes. Yeah, like you're yeah. you're not you're not just always beat. So if if Dan has any sort of bluffs in his range, I mean, I, I think you just have to stick it in with the second nuts. Unfortunately, if if you're beat, you're beat. Pretty good flop for for Colopy here, having the Ace of Hearts blocker. Colopy turning two pair to go along with his Ace of Hearts blocker. Do we bet right now? Take the passive line. Man, I can't get over that hand. That was that is crazy. That is a very pivotal hand. Like hand, you know, it listen fifty thousand dollars in equity right there. It came in the big bet game too. I mean. You know, that's right. That's the only place that it, that it could come in. I mean, it's so hard. Two pair. Danzac does win, rivering the higher two pair. Yeah, but what I was going to get to about the the big bet game is, yeah, you know, Danzac is of course capable of bluffing in a lot of different spots. But when you're doing so in the big bet games to that magnitude, you can really mess up if you're wrong, right? Like, you yeah. can light a lot of chips on fire versus, you know, leaning on the limit stuff where you might consider yourself a little bit more experienced and a little bit better off, right? Right. But he went for it there and got to give it to him. Absolutely have to give it to him. Octopi Poker is building your path to poker mastery. Combine modern poker tools with collaborative study. For a limited time, get access to the Octopi Poker platform for free over at octopipoker.ai. Again, that's octopipoker.ai to get in the free beta and become a part of the Octopi tribe. Thank you, everyone, who is tuning in. If you are watching on YouTube, hit that like button. You got to hit the thumbs up now after that bluff by Zanzac. I mean, you don't you don't have a choice. It's mandatory. Subscribe to the channel as well for all you watching on Poker Go. Appreciate you guys. Love our entire Poker Go community. We are heads up here in event number four, ten thousand dollar eight game tournament. Sixty one entries to start. We got the final two. We have Jim Colopy versus Dan Zach for the title. Hundred and ninety five thousand dollars up top, hundred and twenty two thousand dollars. Locked up right now. So this pot was limped from Jim Colopy on the button. Dan Zach potted it. Call. On the flop, Dan Zach has an open ender with a king high flush draw and a set draw. Colopy has top and bottom pair with the ace of clubs blocker to the, the nut flush draw. And we, as we can see, equities here are exactly 50-50. Turn is the nine, which gives Dan Zach the nut straight. King Queen, I expect to see a very large bet from Dan Zach. Going for the check raise. I like it. I think we can put in a lot more money if we if we check raise on this turn. Does Jim fall for it? Remember, he only has top and bottom pair with with the Ace of Clubs blocker. I think he's he might be thinking about going for it. Does check back?
Queen on the River is a very, very bad card for Jim at this point. Not a lot of hands that, that he beats if Dan decides to put in some money. He just wants to see Dan check. Zach will not be checking. 250,000 is the bet. Dan was the last aggressor, aggressor pre-flop, which means he probably has some sort of high card equity hand. This board run out is very poor for Jim's exact hand. I don't expect him to put in too much money with this. Dan is trying to get an extra 250000 Carl will be using one time extension so far. I think that eye roll is, is very indicative of uh, I don't really know what to do at this point. Well, so far he's he's been in two kind of similar spots already, and he's guessed wrong both times. That's he called true. with that king. Dan Zach showed him two pair. He folded the best hand to a bluff, got shown the bluff, right? So it's like at some point, you know, you're kind of like, man, like you're everything I do is wrong, wrong, you know? Yeah, he, he can like, also tell like he's got he's got a sense like maybe he's got he's gonna call and it's gonna be wrong. And Danzak shows him the straight. Call up his two pair into the muck. So those three big pots all in PLO, all very hefty, going the way of Dan Zach. Incredibly pivotal. King, queen, four, four. Yeah, he guessed wrong when he tried to call with the king. Dan Zach showed him value. He guessed wrong when he folded the, the straight. He got shown a bluff. There. Round. He tries to pick off a bluff with two pair. He gets shown a straight. So <laughs> things very much going the way of Dan Zack. He's up over six point two million in chips. Colopy for the first time in what seems like forever is below three million in chips. Yeah. He's he's still got a lot of play though, so things aren't going his way recently, but he's definitely not out of it. Zach going to limp the button here with Jack-10-4-3. Colopy checks Ace-9-7-3. Ace-Ace-5. Three aces for Colopy. Check, check. Jack on the turn. Call if he comes with a bet, 175. That's a big bet, 175 and a 225. When Dan has shown no aggression on previous streets into this pot. Does get paid. Dan Zach comes along. He is behind right now. Could win it on the river. And oh the deuce gosh. comes in. Dan Zach hits a wheel. Colopy has a losing three aces. The good news for Colopy is it's, it's a heart. Deuce of hearts. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have a flush. He only has the nine of hearts. Dan Zach could definitely have a flush in this spot. Colpy's thinking, is this hand good enough to go for value? He says yes for a small sizing. 
I was going to say, Zach might not raise him, which kind of is like no, extra I painful think. because then you're going to see it. Not low. Right. I think, I think the raise is... <laughs> The race is a little too ambitious in this spot. Jim Colopy taking hit after hit in PLO. Have you won every hand of this? <laughs> <laughs> Do you just want me to wow. This? Zach up over 6.8 <laughs> million now. Colopy on 2.325 million. He doesn't even say what game is on it. Who cares about that one? Still playing PLO. It's been all Dan Zach in this heads up match. Yeah, every hand, either producing the best hand or getting the bluffs through. And, and they've all been fairly good sized pots that he's been winning, you know? Yeah, it's, nothing, he's like just. Chair. Nothing to sneeze at. Yes, even now. Call the limps on the button. Zach checks. Ace, King, Seven. Both players connecting with that King. Check from Zach. Colopy checks back. Seven on the turn. That hurts Colopy's chances. He's only drawing to a four now at this point. The king nine of Dan Zak has a pretty big hammer hold on this hand. Although we did see Dan Zak just hit the deuce on the river having the same amount of equity. Check, check again here. Ace on the river. So Dan Zak gets the check mark here. As long as he gets to a showdown, he's gonna pull this pot in too. Probably goes check, check again, right? Is King-9 good enough to bet in this spot? I don't think so. Now facing three checks and a, just a check preflop from Dan Zak. Is one king with no kicker good enough to bet in this spot? Colby might decide it is and go for some, some thin value for a there small sizing. 100,000. Zach snaps it off and asks him, King what? 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 Here. <laughs> and when you got the King 4-4 four, four deuce, you don't want to hear King what, okay? <laughs> yeah, Dan Zach has won every hand of PLO. Seven million chips now for Dan Zach. Again, Zach was the winner of the inaugural PGT Mixed Game Series. We ran the first one early on in the 2023 PGT season. Zach had five caches and was able to top the leaderboard. That's crazy. He's heads up now with Jim Colopy, who's on 2.1 million, and I'm not sure Jim Colopy has won a hand. All right, we're, heads we're up playing limit hold'em, <laughs> so maybe maybe we'll see a, a change in the guard in this game. Limit hold'em. Limits are 150,000, 300,000. Colopy not too at risk yet, but this game does play quite big, oh. especially heads up. Raise on the button from Zach with 9-8 off. Colopy calls from the big blind with Jack 10 off. Queen, 5, deuce, 2 clubs. Colopy checks. Zach checks behind. Nine on the turn. Of course, Zach of course. hits the turn, and it, it gives it gives Colopy a straight draw, so he's going to be putting some money in here, as he does. He comes out with a bet. Can't imagine Zach is going anywhere. I'm going to let you know it's one of the best <laughs> feelings to be in Zach's shoes, where nothing you do is wrong. Everything gets rewarded, and you just go on to win the tournaments. Colopy it's happened to me a couple times. off here on the river. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> bet of 300000 Bad news once again shown to Colopy. Zach's going to turn over his 9-8 and win it with a pair of 9s here. So hold them, PLO. Two cards, four cards, doesn't matter. The chips are going Dan Zach's way. Colopy can only shake his head. I mean, I mean look at him. I mean, 
Mm. That's just how it is. That's Try how it is in poker sometimes. <laughs> Colpy now I'm, I'm down to like one point like two five million. Again, the big bet right, right now in limit hold'em. Still six hands to go of limit hold'em. Big bet's three hundred thousand. So just over four <laughs> big bets left for Jim Colopy. The most. <laughs> he wants to get all in here, but he can't. This is, this is limited hold'em, sir. He's going to raise it up with all right, sir. king, queen off. The and the big blind, Zach's got 9, 8 off once again. 9.15 minus your stack. Zach makes the call. I guess I got a 3 bet that last hand. Maybe. <laughs> Six, five, four. Bet. Zach checks. Colopy bets. The bet on the street is 150,000. Zach does have two overs and a gutter, so he's going to come along here. Does decide to call. It would be interesting to see if, if Dan Zach raised on that flop. Seven, it's seven always just comes seven. in. It's always coming seven, especially when you're Dan Zach, okay? It's crazy. <laughs> This guy cannot lose right now. Can he manage to get a larger portion of Jim Colopy's chips? Colopy does check behind. King. <laughs> it's paint, but it's just a jack. to rub it in. Yeah, I mean, a king or a queen would have just been absolutely brutal. Dan Zach here with the nuts. Comes out with the bet, 300000 All right, let's see if Colopy can correctly sniff this one out. A little shake of the head there. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, once again, yeah. there's not too much we beat. Kind of a shake of the head, like, yeah, of course you have something. Like, something of, co yep. of course, you know, of course. <laughs> with the way this is going. 800000 now. Yeah, fewer than three big bets remain for Jim Colopy. Still five hands to play That's of Limit Hold'em. Heads up. Yeah, he, he's just talking about he had 6 million chips to start and has not won a single pot all the way down to 800,000. That wasn't the game. It was trying to make a deal in either the PLO uh, version. All right. 450. All right, and <laughs> this will do it. Let's see, can Jim Colopy? Let's see how much I got. Oh, I made it four so Zach opened on the okay. button. Colopy three bet it. Zach uh, four bet it. Yep. Colopy is thinking I mean, right I'm now. All right, all in. All right, <laughs> you heard Dan Zach say, "I'm okay with it." They're just gonna get the money in. All so. in, all in. All right. <laughs> Pair Let's of sixes see. for Colopy. He is out in front, 56% for him in this coin flip against Danzak, who has ace nine off. Colopy looking to survive here and fight on in heads up play. Danzak looking to get the victory. If he can finish off Colopy here, he's going to take the title. Let's see a flop. King eight seven. Colopy's sixes remain in the lead. 10 6, right? I mean, yeah, of course. The, the way Dan Zach's going. Six first, though. Hmm. <laughs> Seven on the turn. <laughs> Colopy's shaking his head because Zach now picks out, picks up a bunch of outs to counterfeit the sixes <laughs> of Colopy. You guys can see the outs at the top of the screen. Yes. 12 outs. Ace, a king, a nine, or an eight. Gives Zach the title. River card All is right. the nine of diamonds, and that is going to do it. Jim Colby finishes in second wow. place. And Dan Zach, the first ever PGT Mixed Games champion from a year ago, comes out on top here in the 2024 PGT Mixed Game Series event number four. Zach takes home $195,200 for that win. Dan Zach absolutely owning heads up play against Jim Colopy. Really nothing that Colopy could do. Dan Zach was running things over, making all the right plays, everything going in his favor, and he is the victor today. Colopy does take home $122,000 in prize money for the runner up finish. And with that, we are going to wrap things up here. 
from Las Vegas from the Poker Go studio. This was the final table of event number four of the PGT Mixed Game Series. For more live coverage from the series, head on over to PGT.com. For Kevin Gerhardt, my name is Donnie Peters, and we will talk to you guys next time.